powered from the Perdomo Scar Studios on the Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the HF Barcelona Studios in Euless, Texas. Welcome to Primetime Special Edition 87. Tonight, sit back, relax, leave your politics at the door, and come smoke with us as the national results of our election come in. And as always, Primetime Special Edition is sponsored by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel aged wrappers with thick high priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars is a family owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double Aged 12 Year Vintage, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary, the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Line, the Perdomo Abomin Broner Valley, Perdomo Lot 23, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the new Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by Aganorso Leaf. Great leaf makes great cigars. Aganorso Leaf stands out because of the distinctive flavor of our Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the blessed lands of Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of our JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorso Leaf special. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorso Leaf. And by Tobacco Era USA, Tobacco Era USA, makers of iconic brands such as Monte Cristo, Romeo Julieta, H. Upman, Aging Room Cigars, Onyx, and Vega Fina. Tobacco Era USA, great things are happening here. And by Drew Estate, check out and download the Drew Diplomat app for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. It's available on iTunes or Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streaming for the Primetime Network of Shows is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate, as well as the Primetime California Studios. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Special Edition number 87. Today is Election Day 2020, November 3rd. This is Will Cooper. Tonight, I'm on the black stage here in the Perdomo Cigar Studios uh, because I forgot to flip flip this. Uh, so, um, so yeah, the, uh, you know, and it was like I just said I'd keep it. So I had to change the notes. But uh, it's Will Cooper here. Uh, glad to be with you tonight um, on this very, very uh, exciting day for sure. Um, a historic day for sure. And we're going to be getting into that, but, um, I want to just, uh, introduce my friend and colleague, Mr. Bear Duplissy. Good evening, Coop, and welcome to, uh, our audience who is tuning in tonight for uh, history in the making. You know, we, we do a lot of history on the show, uh, and the, but tonight is, is no different. It's just on a more national, actually an international scale. Um, you know, I mean, cause our, uh, the election, results of the United States still hold weight uh, around this uh, this great world that we live in. Um, and I take, a, I take a great quote from a, a show that I was a fan of, uh, Coop, called Newsroom. And Jeff Daniels, who's the main character on the show, says, you know, he's like, you know, toast to all of us. He says, because every two years around the country, we get to, we have the, we have the chance and get the opportunity to overthrow the government. Yeah. Yeah. And I could tell you, Bear International, you know, two years ago, I was in Stockholm during the Kavanaugh hearings. That's what everyone in Sweden was watching, at least in Stockholm, that those when those Kavanaugh hearings were on in the evening. Every bar I went into, every restaurant I went to had on the Kavanaugh hearings. I was in England the week before the midterm elections. And that's all people wanted to talk about with me in England was the midterm elections. So there is no doubt uh, this is something of a global of a global scale here. You know. This concept, this show we were going to do tonight, this has been a long time in the making. I don't remember Mm -hmm. how it started. I don't remember if it was when Todd Nafee was on the show or if it was before we before Todd was on, we came up with it and and we talked to Todd about it. And Todd, unfortunately, could not be here tonight and he wanted to be. I know that. Um, But do you remember what it was? this, This is going back over two years that we talked about this. Yeah, no, it definitely is. No, it was with Todd on the show. We were talking, you know, because uh, we were talking about his role uh, on the board and how he really enjoyed uh, politics. And, you know, we started talking 
just generalized politics in general and 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 how he just you know it was something that he really enjoyed and it kind of just sparked conversation we're like man we got to do a we got to do an election night show and we kind of tested the waters with the midterms you know we did some coverage and you know kind of talked a little bipartisan uh you know, bipartisan coverage of it, just kind of from a yeah. historical and an analytical perspective. And um, I had fun with it. And I know you did too. And I, I think the audience was uh, really well received. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's be, we're going to be honest. Bear and I have a political opinion on a lot of candidates and issues, but we're leaving that at the table tonight the best we can. Um, it, it's something, I know it's, it's things I know I want to talk about. And I'm like, well, if I talk about it, is it going to be construed as political? But I think when I went through it, and I've been worried about this show. You know I've been worried about doing this show yeah. uh, before before this year. Uh, but we committed to do this show, um, and we're doing it. So, I mean, I think we, we have to stand by it. We told our, we've been telling our audience we've been, we were going to do this for a long time. We've, we're going to do it. I mean, there's, there's no we, – we have to kind of – and like I said, we've had a model. Like, we had a model for this. We've done mm – -hmm. we did the midterms, and then I remember we did Super Tuesday – and we and uh, so I think we we can certainly do the and the audience is going to be the best um, is going to be the ones that are, are going to best be able to tell this. Um, so, uh, you know, you know, I, and I, like I said, we're asking people tonight, come to enjoy the show. I, we know everyone has a political opinion. We want people to have political opinion. We just don't want we don't want it to a point where it's going to be inflammatory or it is debate. Uh, we want everyone to feel yeah. welcome on any side of the aisle you're in and that's going to be the spirit of this show tonight and and i'm sure there's other shows that you can you can join into that are in this maybe in that spirit that you want that to and i'm okay with that um but we 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 hope i think we're gonna have fun with this tonight i, I really do yeah again you know this is you know we want to observe you know this is a truly observing history in the making you know and 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 uh, you know what it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on um, yeah and you know Coop, I've, I've long since said this. I've said this many times on this show. I've said this many times on my show. Uh, one of the things that that, that I, I, I'm, I'm most sad about in our country today is just the uh, the lack of uh, and the inability for people to debate and for and uh, you know because for whatever whatever reason doesn't matter what style you're idle on people yeah. are it's just become so it's become so toxic and that like you can't you can't simply just disagree and walk away friends right. and that's actually something that we've we've talked about a number of times on the show in particular like with guests like glenn loop you know glenn and i have disagreed on many things and we've and you know we've i mean we haven't gotten even i wouldn't even say heated but i would say like you know it, it's it's got it's gotten sporty you know yeah, our exchanges and yeah but we were able to part away, and and I think we have a great respect for each other. So. Yeah, well, and we'll, yeah, I agree. Um, I think certainly, um, that's one thing I've always admired about Glenn is he's never, he could he'll disagree with you, he'll let you know he disagrees with you, but he'll respect you. Um, and I, and, I, and that's you know, and today obviously is the end of the Glenn Loop era at midnight. Um, which is mm -hmm. you know we're, we're going to get into that I know tonight, for sure. Uh, but you know, uh, you know we're 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 losing. Whatever you think about Glenn Glenn, we're losing someone. Uh, we're losing a big voice we've had for the last 12 years. I mean, it's, yeah. just, it's just a no, fact. It's, just... it's a fact. Whether you agree or disagree with him, that voice is not there anymore. Um, so um, what, an, what an amazing night for a curtain call for him. Yeah. It, 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 speaking well, like that's crazy, right? Right. Right. It, it is. Um, he, you know, so and the last thing we'll get into. So I don't like, this guy's not been a lame duck executive director. Um by any means he was, he was still kind of i know hustling out there uh, for a while so um as it comes to an end i mean uh, we'll get into i think what our what the future is going to lie with that because there's a lot of issues i know we're going to talk about tonight um but i want to say one thing about glenn before and i know we're going to talk i keep saying we're going to talk about it, but glenn made it glenn kind of if there's one thing i'll say that glenn was a big contributor is he got the message out there about being a cigar voter um now the mm -hmm. you could debate how important being a cigar voter is in the grand scheme of things we're not going to all, all I'm saying, he created. I think he helped create a lot of awareness where people might not have had that awareness of yeah. being a cigar voter. It's up to you to decide how important that is. Like, if if you think cigars are very important and you need to look at it very closely for the candidate, if you don't, that's fine too. You know, that's just the way it is. But but he created that awareness. Absolutely. I mean, I still um, I still wear my pin every election day. Um, you know, I. <laughs> uh funnily enough I, I took it off when i was getting ready for uh the show but um 
the you know the CRA uh, smoke and vote you know uh, pin that we got as members you know so I, I mean I have that and I wear with that with pride and I mean yeah and I mean in true in true bipartisan fashion I mean I don't know if you saw his Facebook post like it, I mean unless unless you're just completely blind deaf and dumb you know who Glenn voted for <laughs> you know but that's but, um, that's, but that's again and, but his but no his post didn't say anything he just said right just go out and go out and vote and right. completely bipartisan and I mean and uh, very 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 good class I mean class act man just a way to kind of right. bow out and right that's the way you do yeah that, man. It, exactly exactly um and I'm, I'm sure we won't handle last of him um we still committed to He's in the chat. On, yeah Glenn, we, Glenn joined the chat Glenn, 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 you're going to come back on the show still, so you're not off the hook even by any means tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, I mean, so we really, uh, a lot of respect for him. He, uh, anytime we've asked him to come on a show, um, whether it's this show, Stogie Geeks, KMA, Smooth Drawers, um, it's like, when can I be there? That That's, yeah. And ask whatever you want. So, I mean, what more? I mean, that's, that we, we appreciate that a lot. Or, you know, so, you know, good uh, congratulations to him. Uh, well, job, well, job, well done. Indeed. All right. How, do we want to have a, we have a couple of housekeeping things before we kind of kick off things, right? Um, so we have the contest and we have our, what we're going to smoke. Do we want to talk about what we're going to smoke first? Or we want to just announce the contest. Your call, Coop. Um, I'm, All right. I'm, I'm going to announce the you. contest because we have people in here right now. Let me preface something, okay? When we do a cigar coupe contest, right, I do try to make it easy, okay? So, and I love that people <laughs> participate. Before you go put an answer, okay, here are the two things I can advise you that will help you get the right answer to be eligible. Go to Google or go to Cigar Coupe. It's an open book is all I'm going to tell you, okay? Because last week, <laughs> most people blew the question when I said, what, where did the Vega Fina brand first originate? Where was it? Where's it? Was and it was Spain, and I had answers from like a lot of other answers that were wrong. A lot of people said the Dominican Republic. That's where it was made, but in terms of where it was sold out of, it was Spain was the answer. <laughs> so, and to be even easier, I said the answer <laughs> beforehand, right? Yeah. So, I was so like, just hit rewind. Just go hit rewind. Go hit rewind. Or we'll go back. So, so again, I told you how you can validate it. So tonight we're going to be giving away another Vega Fina set um gift Ooh, set nice. right so we have one more of these to give away um in this you get the cab Sav, the bottle of cab Sav, the vf branded one um from josh sellers um you get that you get a really nice vega fina branded lighter torch lighter you get a set of earbuds so uh the wireless char rechargeable earbuds and um I'm leaving one other thing out. You get one other thing. <laughs> Why am I, I I'm going to apologize. I'm leaving it out right now. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm leaving one thing out. <laughs> but you get you get that. Why am I drawing a blank on that right now? But anyway, if you go do that, all you need to do, okay, to go to get win this gift set, okay, is to do the following. You go into the chat, uh, uh, the comments that we're doing tonight. And when you do those comments, um, you simply got to put in the name of another Vega Fina cigar since the Vega Fina 1998. Or, not since, another cigar besides the Vega Fina 1998. Now, the Vega Fina 1998 is a new cigar that just hit the U.S. right now. And um, what's really cool about that cigar is that's a cigar that was originally sold in Europe. It went over to the, the U.S. Um, earlier this year. It came over to the U.S. this year. And... It's a blend, right, that um, it incorporates five different tobaccos, uh, Ecuador, Indonesian, Colombian, Nicaraguan, and Dominican, um, with three, and they're all three-year aged, right? So it was, it, was, it was a cigar, Vega Fina 1998, to celebrate Vega Fina's uh, 20th anniversary a couple years ago. Okay. All right. So the Vega Fina 1998 is a Vega Fina cigar that's out there. You can't use Vega Fina 1998 as your answer. You have to give me another Vega Fina cigar, okay? And all you guys, guys do is call Google. Yeah, or <laughs> Cigar Coop, or it's Cigar Coop. You can't get easier. All you have to do is pull Cigar Coop up, right? Um, if but all you gotta do is hashtag it Vega Fina 1998. So, 
Another Vega. Okay, so let me recap. Yeah. Another Vega Fina cigar. Not yeah. the Vega Fina 1998. Yeah. Another Vega Fina cigar. Hashtag Vega Fina 1998. Good things are happening here, guys. Get this prize, man. This stuff is awesome. No, Alan Rubin, you're not eligible. Stop it. No. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I had the I had the prizes right. They're, those are the three things that are in there. I did get it right. I thought there's a little case that's in there. That's the fourth thing. The ear pods are freaking awesome, man. Like, are, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, you get wireless earbuds, right? Because you can't plug them into an iPhone anymore. You get the torch lighter is awesome, right? The torch lighter is awesome. And the bottle of wine. Um, you, you can't beat that. All you have to do, okay, is put the name of a Vega Fina cigar. Um hashtag it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag. Vega Fina, 1998. This Hashtag is, Vega Fina, 1998. Look, look, I'm not one of these guys who makes you go tag 12 people, put this on five friends, this thing. Um, you know, I <laughs> like my I, page. <laughs> like I my mean, page. oh, my goodness. I see these contests. We have to have you got to follow my Instagram page. You got to. I make this easy. I love giving stuff away, but we want to you know, we do want to create a little awareness because Vega Fina is a brand I'm very high on. Um, I, and I do a lot That's of reviews true. of that brand. And um so, so look, we're, you know, we're giving something great away, but we're trying to create a little awareness on top of it. So, so it's easy guys. I'm just telling you. Um, and I noticed a little bit of a tougher question because Vega Fina is, you know, it's a brand that's kind of been in the U S but it's one that's more popular, I think in Europe right now, it was a number three cigar of the year in 2000. Um, it was in number three cigar of the year in 2018. Yeah. You could go look that up and that would be a different cigar than the Vega yep. Fina 1998. Just saying. Hashtag yeah. Vega Fina nineteen ninety eight guys win this prize back. You, you the Trinidad one was really cool too. The Trinidad like, one was it. was awesome. It's got the bank, uh, I and then you got the Onyx money clip too. I know that. Um, yeah, I was really excited about that. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So um, again, um, definitely check it out. Uh, Tobacco USA they've been a great partner of ours. Um, coming on board, they've been always a great partner. Um, they're doing a lot of these contests for us and they're doing, they're, these are really cool. Everyone's got the prize packs like, them, so, <laughs> so, um, Barry, you're not eligible. So I can tell you that. I'm not, I'm just laughing at Sean, <laughs> Sean miles. How's that? I did the research. He, he answered it. Nice. Good job. Oh, God, right. God it's like, hey, God, I couldn't so believe the answer. I couldn't believe because I said the answer last week and people, there were more wrong. And I, I didn't have a lot of winners to pick from last week was the problem. It's a question, like, it's a question of people listening to us, but not listening to us. It's no, okay. I know. It's I right. know. It was amazing. I mean, oh, I, I told you. good. Yeah. I even said use Google if you didn't hear my answer. Right. <laughs> All right. But like I said, you can't. It's an easy question, guys. But we, yeah, it's good. Um, and thanks to Diana. Uh, she's been doing a great job. Uh, and Raphael as well. Uh, that whole team there. They, I. They've been fantastic. We, you know, we get the prizes out right away to everybody. So it's not like you're waiting. Like if, if, if I was, if I was doing this myself, it'd be 45 days before you get your prize. So, um, but okay. So that's our tobacco era USA uh, giveaway. I'll be mentioning it a few times throughout the show. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So we're going to get the cigars now. Coop. What are we smoking? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so what are we smoking tonight? We said, um, by the way, do I, do I have to censor any comments yet or no? No, no, no. Everyone's, uh, everyone's there you go. Okay. Great. I'm, I'm been, happy. Everyone's, no. then we, yeah, that's Jay, good. Jay's, Jay's given a history lesson on, on, on how uh, the demo, the, you know, the Cuban American demographic votes traditionally. Yeah. And he's, no, that's fine. Factual, yeah. And that's, yeah, no, that's, that's all not, good. That's okay. No, that's fine. Um, okay. So, who wants to go first? Because I want to see like Barry and I picked a theme with these cigars, <laughs> and I and we I don't know. He was the one who said I have a theme. He comes to me and said I have a theme. He didn't tell me what the theme is, but I'm guessing what what the theme is. I know yeah. what the theme is. Okay. I, he, said, he said bipartisanship. Right? Bipartisanship, yeah. And mm -hmm. I and I, I exactly think no know, know what this is going to be tonight. So let's let's uh who goes first here? Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll go first because okay. uh, in the theme, I have four. I have four cigars, and the fifth cigar represents just just the, the just the principle of tonight. So, but the theme tonight is bipartisanship, and so you know, um, I mean, we're 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 electing a president tonight, Coop. Yeah, the United States of right. America is, is electing a is electing a president, and we just talked about this, uh, and we've been talking about it ad nauseum. Um, this fact that you know we need to be able to have a discussion and a debate and have a difference of opinion. And be able to part our way as friends. Coop, Coop, we're we're great partners, you and I. Yep. And uh, and we disagree on a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But I think including like, cigars. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so, um, uh, in in in, the, in to honor us tonight, Coop, because you know that's what we're doing <laughs> to honor right. us, Coop, tonight. I am in the spirit of bipartisanship. I brought two cigars to the table. 
uh, and uh, I I brought a uh, surrogate's animal cracker six by sixty nah. for my good friend <laughs> William Cooper. Uh huh. <laughs> I brought a Alec Bradley Nikapiro H10 Lancero for me. Okay. okay. All right. Now, now, okay. Again, difference of opinions. If they've been spouted out a lot, you know, especially on social media and in our in our little world of the premium cigar industry, we, you know, recently we there was there was a dust up. Okay, there's no other way to say it. There was a dust up between two prominent people in this industry. Jeff and, and Skip. Uh, We're not holding back names. It's Jeff and Skip. Okay, Je- yeah. Okay, Jeff and Skip. Okay, Jeff and Skip, and they had a difference of opinion. And yep. it, 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 yep. I mean, we talk about heated. I mean, that was right. heated. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I have a great respect for for both of them. Right. I, I, we I, do too. Yeah. Both the, yeah. I'm privileged to call them both friends. Um, at least, I, at least for right now, maybe they'll they'll feel differently after yep. I say what I'm about to say. Right. But in the Again, bipartisanship, gentlemen. So, wh- how else am I going to honor my two friends than by put bringing them together? So, I'm I've got an army of angels with some glorious FSG, yep, tobacco, Good. right. And then I've got I've got me a saber tooth here. Oh wow! It's all about bipartisanship, sharing the love, right. and to bring it all together. To bring it all together because of what we are, Coop. You and I are citizens of this great nation, getting to take part in the one of our greatest privileges as Americans to take part in the democracy that which means we get to vote for our leadership. So none other than to celebrate it than the American made by Americans here in America by the JC Newman cigar company in Tampa, Florida. That is, that is my, uh, that is my swan song cigar. If we get that far, but yeah, I've got a, I've got a hell of a bipartisan lineup here. Animal cracker for you. Lancero for me. I know Sean Miles is happy about that. I've got an army of angels for Jeff. I've got a, a saber tooth for Skip, and I've got an American for the American that we all are and get to do our right and our privilege and the greatest thing in the greatest country in the world. We get to vote for our leadership. So, hell yeah, that's what I'm smoking tonight. Okay, so the theme was bipartisanship. That's all you told me, um, and we were thinking the same way. <laughs> um, so I I start. Tonight, in the spirit of things, with a Nat Sherman Sterling Super Lancer. Not a Lancer, a Super Lancer I went with tonight. Yes, sir. And, I, and I, Nat Sherman, this is one of my favorite blends, the, the Sterling. Uh, so I have never smoked this in a Super Lancer. So uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, because Gordo's of Atolas, too. Uh, I have the Crux Maduro, <laughs> right? Now I have four cigars, right? So the third one, we also thought alike on this, <laughs> J.C. Newman American. There you go. Then I kind of went, <laughs> this is where I thought a little out of the box, right? So I said, well, what's a good third-party cigar, right? What's the, you know. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Uh, so I went, I, I said, I said the hell with it. I went with, it's, it's in foil, right? But it's the Viaje Oro Reserva uh, number six. Number five, excuse me, the one that got number two scar of the year. Because Viaje is kind of one that came out of left field as far as boutique players go. Uh, they made the top number two cigar of the year in 2011. So I kind of said, I just, I stretched it alone and said, okay, here's a third party one to come in there. He's kind of the renegade, you know, and did well. So that that's kind of what I went with tonight. Nice, nice. So we were thinking, so again, this is, uh, you know, and Bear and I, we have talked about this. Lancero Gordo debate. Um, it's going. It goes back over a year and a half ago. Uh, you know, we did a seven twenty four run of those. It's been an ongoing theme of conversation on both our shows, and um, that's our spirit here. Is we are each going to be uh, lighting up each other's you know <laughs> size that we advocate for here. So, um, you know, uh, good job there. Good job there. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I'm I'm excited to hear what you think of the Super Lancero, man. Yeah. I, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna actually go in the spirit of this too. I'm gonna light it up first. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna light up my Lancer just because it's a it's yeah, the I mean, it's like, cigar. Yeah. It's the yeah. last cigar I've got in my lineup. <laughs> that's what that, that's so, kind of what I rational too. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing, and uh, you know, I get some, I see some Team Gordos out there, and and this is great. All right, let's kind of get into let's kind of just get into this here. Um, where we are right now, um, we are. The election, there's about of a bunch of states in there right now. Um, this is where things stand as of 949 Eastern. Um, according to the Associated Press, 
Joe Biden has 131 electoral votes for 48.3 percent of the uh, of the vote of a 30 of 30 million votes. So he has yeah. 30. Donald Trump. This is what's very interesting right now. The way this is going, I would not expect to know. Donald Trump is trailing. He has 92 electoral votes. He has, but he has more popular vote. Go figure that. Um. 31,212,493 for 50.2% of the vote. Um, it is a close race right now. Um, and uh, we will see what happens. In the next 10 minutes, we're going to be getting a bunch of results coming in um, that could really tip the election right now. Um, I think we talked about, I, I put in eight states in play, but I think there's 10. Yeah. I think there's 10 states right now that are going to uh, decide. And I, I'm glad I added the last two at the end, right? So the states to watch tonight, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Texas. And boy, Texas I did not have on the list. And boy, what's going on in Texas could decide the whole thing tonight, mm -hmm. because that that is a close race right now. And we and like you said, there's votes coming in that we, we don't know which precincts have counted yet in, in Texas, but that could that could be the deciding your home state could decide the next president right now. It's true. Um, well, I can tell you right now, uh, according to the AP. Uh, the, the, the votes that have come in, um, uh, Dallas and Tarrant County aren't even fully in yet. Yep. Those are huge counties. Yep. And to the very far west, my hometown, my home county of El Paso County, which is, I will tell you, very populous county and historically has gone blue uh, in presidential elections, uh, gubernatorial elections, Senate elections. It is historically a blue county. Yep. It has yet to be counted. Um, and Tarrant County and Dallas County aren't official. Harris, where Houston is, uh, lean in blue right now. Um, over what? Here's a really cool fact about Harris County. Coop, you want to talk about some really one over one million votes cast um, in the first week of early in, in the first week of early uh, early voting in Harris County alone. One million votes. Yeah. And when when early voting shut down. Harris County had beat their 2016 total <laughs> votes. Wow. So that's how many people are coming to the polls this time around. Yeah. And you're, I'm looking at the map now here. And, and yeah, you're right. Dallas hasn't been counted. Dallas, the Dallas area doesn't look it's been counted. Houston has some blues. A lot of blues in the south of the state. Uh, that Laredo, Brownsville area um, definitely is blue. And Bay Hart like, County, San Antonio is blue. Travis County, Austin, yeah. William, uh, uh, Williamson County is blue. Yeah. But that's that's I mean that's part for the course though. That's historically yeah, that's historically accurate. The Harris County has gone. Harris County, Houston is is the, it it uh, prevailing win. It 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 comes and goes. It's gone blue. Right. It's gone red. Just depends. Oh, you know, over history and everything. So, but I don't uh, think I only know one person who thought tonight this would be a major factor. Um, and I was telling you before who it was, and I didn't believe him, right? And lo and behold, it, this your home state could decide this election. It, it's everything else might not matter if Texas comes in. Like everyone had this as a red state, a close red state, but I think people said, "Oh, who pull it out?" In Mm -hmm. You can make the argument that this could go either way right now. Yeah, we, we don't know. I mean, we don't. In, in the areas you're talking about, you have a lot of expertise. El Paso, it's not a small populated area. People, really, El Paso is way out mm -hmm. there, I know, but it's not a small city. There's a lot of votes that are going to be counted out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a that the county is the the county is huge. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a really big populous part of the state. A lot of people don't realize. Um, you know, and I mean, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the 2020 census puts it in at, but as of 2000 is, as of 2010, 
we were still under a million people. I can guarantee it's over that now. Yeah. So, I mean, there's states um, I mean, that don't even have that many people. Right. That's what I'm saying. That area is – that's a big area. And, you know, there's a lot of – there's a lot of issues. We know the issues that pertain to the border area that are polarizing. There's no question about it. I mean, so, so you look at those and you say, if this thing flips and it's right now about two thirds of the precincts have called, no one's calling this race yet, but the 38 electoral votes, but boy, oh boy. Yeah. Um, I don't care. I, I, I don't care who you are picking. For. I, I only know one person who's going out on them saying Texas is going blue. Yeah. So uh, it's uh it's it's I'm really I'm really surprised how close it is. I frankly I am, and I really thought I really thought um, I really thought it would have been called by now and, and and called red, you know. Just just I mean I'm I'm going off of history, man. I'm just you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So. so no, I agree. Now of the ten states that I've listed, um, how are they doing right now? Uh, Texas is leaning red, but it's very close. Uh. I was not reported that I've seen yet. Minnesota is leaning blue heavily. Now, uh, Florida is Florida is red. Florida is Flor- Florida is going to get called here. Ninety one percent of the ninety one percent is in. Yeah, and Wisconsin and Michigan are leaning red, but there's a lot of urban votes still to be counted there. Um, I don't think everything's coming from Detroit yet. So, so yeah, you got those two states that are um, uh, Pennsylvania is leaning blue. North Carolina is leading blue. I'm not surprised. I think Joe Biden will win North Carolina. Uh, Georgia is leaning uh, Trump. Um, but watch that one as well. That's pretty. It's well, I don't know. 52 percent of the vote right now. It depends. I'm looking to see Atlanta is leaning blue. Atlanta looks to be counted, but there's still not much of the not much of the votes are in yet. That's the thing. Like it's only 50 percent of the state has been counted. Yeah. And, and it's I mean, it's heavy right now. It's heavy. It's heavy red. But if with only 50 percent reporting, can we talk about Pennsylvania for a second? Yeah. Yeah. OK, so first first of all, it's, it's really early. Only 20 percent has been reported. Right. As of as of 952 Eastern, which is right. crazy to me. They must be they must be counting by hand. Uh-huh. Um, but. Let's talk about the, the, the like so a lot of I've been I've been reading a lot about uh you know just commentary about uh, like how just ignore Pennsylvania it's not going to be a factor this year this this time around and that's really surprising to me because what I found really interesting and I I said this was uh on the when we were covering the midterms coup was that Pennsylvania hasn't gone re- hadn't before 2016 hadn't gotten red since the first uh, Reagan yeah run. In, early, in 1980, so um, it had gone blue. It went blue in the second time, then when Reagan re- ran again for re-election, it went blue against Bush. It, it elected it, it elected Clinton both times. It went against Bush uh, W George W Bush both times. It voted for Obama both times, and then all of a sudden, it goes red in 2016. Yeah, and yep. that was a huge surprise. It was a big surprise. Um, yeah, I was talking about the Ed Rendell factor. Uh, Ed Rendell was the mayor of Philadelphia from '91 to '99. Uh, then he became governor a few years later. He was very pop. He was a, he was very popular uh, in the state. Again, a lot of people liked him. He talked sports. You know, he ate cheesesteaks. Um, he was a hard guy not to like. Um, and people again can make their own opinion. But during that time, he like him, he was on sports shows and, and all these shows. And what he started doing is Philadelphia was always a blue county. Philadelphia County was always blue. But then you started seeing these surrounding counties become blue. Uh, and a lot of people backed Rendell. And, and Rendell, Rendell was a big mouthpiece for his party. He was always support. He always was loyal to the party. Um, then you start seeing like not just Philly, but the whole southeastern part of, of Pennsylvania suddenly got very strongly blue. Um, Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, I can't talk. I don't know as much about Pittsburgh other than it's a little more about, you know, steel belt type of town. uh, So it's, and it tends to flip flop, but, but I think Philadelphia and and the surrounding suburbs have been strong enough. Why that has been carried going from like, you know, since 84 that, you know, it's just, it's been a very good stronghold there. 
So, uh, but yeah, I, I can we just I, go I, ahead and count? Can we just go ahead and count Utah red? I mean, don't do, don't they just don't they just automatically just mark that at this point? Or start counting? Yeah, it's like you know the funny story is <laughs> I remember there was an election in New Jersey, right? And this is before early voting, right? I and I had a vote very late. I had a vote before the eight p.m. polls closed, right? Because I wanted to vote, right? And there was the polls closed at eight. That's how it was. I got to the polls at. Seven. I, I, I put my vote in at like 7.56, okay, four minutes before the polls close. I walk out to my car. By the time I open my car, put, you know, do what I need, it's, it was, I put the radio on, and they called New Jersey already. And I'm like, what the hell? I get, <laughs> they, they called. It was like a minute or two if they called it already. So I'm like, that, I go, well, that was real productive. <laughs> said, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was real productive. Like, I'm like, what the hell? That was that was what I was say that was really crazy to me it was like they've already called New Jersey, and I was like I, that's what before we even went on Coop I was like I was like really like he, like it's not even close, no like it's not even close and I was like I was like and and you were like oh yeah yeah it's it's it was, yeah. it was and I was like really like I mean I I I knew I figured it was going to go blue I just didn't think it was going to be this heavy I mean it's showing, granted only sixty percent of the votes are reporting right now but it's sixty one percent Biden, yeah. well there's a yeah. <laughs> Well, as an update in Pennsylvania, it's just flipped back for Trump. And no, it flipped back. It flipped back. It flipped to well in the time that we were talking about it, it flipped to Trump, flipped to Biden, and now it flipped back to Trump again. It's unbelievable. And Trump just picked up six more votes somewhere. Um, I didn't see. They, where... they called. They called Indiana for him. Okay. So, so this this is shaping up to be a close election. Uh, would you say there that? Trump was the underdog going into tonight. Wow, that's a. I think he was. I. I I, I think I think to a certain extent he was there. There was a, there's there were there were a lot of things going against him, right? Um, Cause there's a lot, there's a lot that's going wrong in this country right now. You know, there, I mean, the, 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 the pandemic, you know, the, the, the racial situations, um, you know, that have, you know, been prominent in 2020. I mean, I mean, recent history, like we're talking about this year. I mean, right. I mean, it, it's almost like the first three years of his presidency almost didn't even matter like one way or another, like didn't matter what side of the aisle you were on. It didn't really even matter because 2020 is just, 2020 has just been so contentious um, and just been has been just such a I mean, it's just been such a clusterfuck. There's no other way to say it. So, yeah, yeah. I'd say like, yeah, he had a he had a challenge. Um, he had a challenge going into tonight, I think. Um, just kind of to, you know, kind of ease the minds of the people that were maybe on the fence. You know, there's obviously people that are firmly in his camp, obviously, that he doesn't have to worry about. Um, but I think the people that were teeter tottering on the edge that kind of wanted, um, you know, want, wanted, wanted a reason, you know, for, for lack of a better right. term or whatever. Um, yeah, I think from that perspective, I think it was, a, you know, it was a little, uh, it was a little uphill battle for him and stuff, yeah. but it's, it's shaping up to be quite a race so far. No. And, uh, you know, we- we're going to talk a little about some of our favorite races in a minute, right? In our history. But, you know, the one thing that you can honestly say in a presidential election is it is very hard for when an economy takes a downturn, even if there's a little boost at the end. If that downturn happens in that, that fourth year, it's big trouble. It's big trouble for the party in office. And that, you, you can look at that historically and you can blame the pandemic. But the bottom line is, if if you have unemployment and a bad economy, or I don't want to say bad economy, let's say the economy isn't what it was performing at at a previous year, it's very historically it's been very hard for that party to kind of maintain the position. Right. Uh, hey, Coop. Arizona yeah. just joined the board. Forty eight percent reporting, fifty three percent Biden, yeah, fifty five percent Biden at sixty percent reporting. This was a, this is a, this is a, this is an interesting turn. 
It's only eleven electoral votes, Coop, but yeah, they have Arizona was supposed to go. Arizona was supposed to go red. Well, it was. Like it, I had I had it as one of the ten states. Don't forget. But yeah, Trump. You know, Trump got. We were talking about this. Royal flush. The royal flush is what won Trump a few years ago, four years ago. He had to get a certain. He had to get those cards, and they all fall into place. And it's the same thing. There's another royal flush scenario. And he needed to defend certain states and flip certain states. And that's where the challenge is going to be tonight. There's no question about it. I'm still amazed at the, where the popular vote is. That's going to change when California comes in. I know that, right? That the yeah, that's vote. what I'm saying. California, well, I'm the entire so- West Coast, California, I mean, Oregon, Washington is going to go yeah. deep blue, like hard yeah. blue. Yeah, you're going to see like, yeah, you're going to see a big change with that. Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, well, we'll keep it. Like I said, it's still, I guess AP is still reporting it at 131. Then we're going to go by AP tonight, I think, to be consistent. And uh, I think Florida is getting close to being called for Trump, though. And it's, Florida is not as close it, as it people has thought. to be. Yeah, it's getting very I, close. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what people were thinking, man. Well, it actually creeped up a point. You don't know. Like, uh, was, um, but no, it, it yeah. it's it's done. It, that's yeah. going red. Yeah, uh, a little update on the North Carolina race um, with Todd Johnson, 61%. To thir- yeah, no, oh, sorry. Go for, ahead. the state Senate one. Todd Johnson, who is a local state senator, retail shop owner, 61% to 38%. Anything below 60% is going to be a disappointment for Todd in this district. So wh- I, t- I said, watch that race. He'll win it, right? But anything less than 60, I think, is, is would be below expectations historically how this district has gone. What his county has gone. So we're, he's going to win it. There's no question about it, but I'm worth watching. He is over that 60% mark right now. So we'll see what happens. What, why, why do you say that, Coop? I'm just interested from a historical it's perspective. So, it's so red. It's such a red. It's been a red stronghold for a long time. It's overwhelming. They haven't put a, like most of these, most of the, uh, the, the, the Democrats haven't even come close is what I'm saying. It's always been something you won by big. Right. So that's why Coop, I'm just, Arizona I, just joined the. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Go, go ahead, please. No, go ahead. I'm done. No, I was going to say Utah just joined the board. And man, what I just said a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. 40, 41% voting, man. Uh, Trump's holding it, but not by much. No, uh, Salt Lake City will go blue. I'll tell you that. Really? Oh, I guarantee you Salt Lake City goes blue. So a big change has been going on in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Well, Pro- Provo's looking to go red right now. Provo will go red. If Saint, so- if Saint, it depends on what if Saint George is the other big city. Yeah, it Saint, depends on what Saint George does. I don't think Saint George goes blue, but I think Salt Lake City. It'll go blue by a small margin. It won't be a, a landslide. Um, but yeah, they'll go blue in Salt Lake City. But North Carolina Salt- finally. North Carolina is re- is there. Well, they have it leaning Trump. But by three thousand votes right now, this but is they're both go. at forty nine point four percent. North Carolina, so, my gosh! So I'm telling you, North Carolina is going to be a battleground after tonight, because they kept some of the they kept some of the polls open later. Now you're you're going to hear whining from someone on this 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 election. This is not going to be decided tonight, in North Carolina. Whether it affects the election, we'll see. But I, I can tell you. Um, I don't know how the governor's race is going in North Carolina, but I expect I expect Roy Cooper to be reelected governor. Um, and I'm looking at it right now. Roy Cooper has got a substantial lead over Dan, Dan Forrest. Um, Dan Forrest is losing that. So and that is no surprise. Um, I, I mean, I don't think anyone didn't expect uh, in the Senate race right now. Uh, there is a big upset going on there as Tom Tillis is, is leading Cal Cunningham. That is one of the nastiest races I've seen in my lifetime. Cal Cunningham got uh, Cal Cunningham pulled an Anthony Weiner. He got caught sexting. <laughs> he had a ten point lead over Tillis in the state uh, before that happened, uh, but he pulled an Anthony Weiner. Jeez. Yeah. So a lot happening here. Uh, a lot of action packed stuff happening here. Um, Sean you Miles know- says that Sean Miles is keeping us updated too. So just you can watch the chat. So. Just wanted to bring it. Since we're talking about Senate races for a second, I wanted to bring in Texas into this. So you know, you know, a couple of years ago, the, the 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 midterms, man, we saw we saw a dead heat race between incumbent Ted Cruz and the very popular uh, Beto O'Rourke, right? Mm-hmm. So 
And all the major counties, all the major counties went blue. And it was kind of it was kind of like a it was kind of like a mini 2016 national election, right? So if you look at like if you look at the 2016 presidential election, like Hillary captured like your some of your main points, right? Like they she had New York and she had California and she had a you know a couple of the blue hotbeds, right? And like and overall the popular vote, right? Right. And but it was the it was the it was middle America. It was middle America that that elected Trump in 2016, right? Yep. And like, oh, like if you want to boil it down to like one simple thing, well, that was kind of what happened in the Senate race during the midterms is that Ted Cruz captured mid Texas, captured the middle of the state, you know, the the rural part of the state, and he had a, you know, and that's how he won the election, but it wasn't by much. And so, this is something that really fascinated me, from like again from a subjective perspective, like if if I'm the Democratic Party, right, and I saw how well a you know how well a democrat performed in this last election because john cornyn who's the who's the incumbent for the republican right. party now he's not as he's not as polarizing as ted cruz um i'll say that as much but he's also he's also but he is polarizing to an extent so they run mj hagar united states air force veteran uh woman against against john cornyn coop i can honestly tell you that i've seen maybe six signs for MJ Hagar, six political signs. There were Beto O'Rourke signs. There were Beto signs everywhere, right? When he was running against Ted Cruz, the DC, the DCCC poured a lot of money into Beto, right? right? To try and to try and flip this state, right? And split the split the Senate race. It was like they fucking gave up, man. And there there was no money given to MJ Hagar. It was like I mean, you want to talk about? It was pitiful. Yeah, it was pitiful, pitiful. Like, like if if I if I'm a Democrat, right? I mean, I'm like you got to you got to just like scratch your head. I mean, heck, you know, like what? Like it was like they didn't even care. You watch that, yeah. I mean, I would be unless they're just picking their fights here. You know, I guess maybe, I mean like Cornyn's coming in at fifty three percent. Just to give you an idea. If Cornyn's Cornyn's winning the him, state back. They've got, I think they declared him the winner already. Uh, when I, I, they could have declared him the winner this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. have mattered. Yeah. No, this, th- look, th- th- look, I told you, Behar County, where San Antonio is, is, is historically blue, right? Okay. Yeah. It's barely blue right now. Yeah. It's barely blue. Like they, they did, they, they poured no money into, in behind her. Like it, like, like I said, if I'm a Democrat, I'm scratching my head because yeah. I, I heck, you know, I, I just I don't I don't get it. Like I I don't get it from a his like from a historical perspective. Two years ago, you almost split Texas, and then you just kind of like you you wash your hands, call it a day, and say, you know what, we're not even gonna we're not even gonna we're not even gonna put up an effort. And that's and that's and to me that's kind of also embarrassing too, right? Because yeah. MJ Hagar is a she's a she's a U.S. veteran. You know, for all intents and purposes, she's a nice lady. And, you know, I mean, I mean, she's a, she's a, she's a good candidate. Right. And I, and they, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like they kind of hung her out to dry a little bit, you know, <laughs> it, it, you just, you know, I've seen that happen in, in New York city a few times with mayoral races, like, 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 like the Blasio was so unpopular, right. Three years ago. If, if anyone was going to try to take the mayorship back out of the Blasio, the Republicans had a chance and they didn't even put money. They didn't, tr- they didn't try to get a They didn't even try. It seemed like, I mean, I knew people who, who voted for the Blasio because it was like no other choice. Right. So, and again, I'm not, I'm not judging Bill de Blasio. I'm just saying he was unpopular. And I, I heard many people say, well, yeah, there was no other. So, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, Money talks on a lot of these things. You're right. I, I got to talk about another race here, right? Because I saw Steve Saka join. What is going on in New Hampshire right now? Wasn't that supposed to be a red state? Yeah. It looks like the. I don't know if there's a slowdown in reporting votes, but but Trump is trailing significantly with 28 percent of the vote. It's it's he's 
he's tearing 53 to uh it's 53.7 for biden and 44.6 for trump yeah they're they're yeah le- not many polls in maine maine is heavy on trump right now but only 12 percent in the bank yeah, yeah. North Carolina is still too close to call. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's still, I mean, that's right there. 90, 90% reporting though for North Carolina. No, and it's 90, still. Yeah. 90%. Damn. Yeah. It, it's, it's getting very interesting there uh, for sure. Um, as, as we follow this uh, 2020 national election here. You're, are um, you, is that, is Charlotte your county? Are you in, uh, cause I know you're on the outskirts of Charlotte. So but sort of. I'm in. So Charlotte is part of a county called Mecklenburg County, which is Charlotte and a few other cities. Um, I'm in Union County, which is the southeast county of Charlotte. So I'm in a suburban county Um, to give you an idea um, of of how it is. Right. Todd Johnson ran for Congress a few years ago, and he was representing 11 counties in the state. And part one of those 11 counties was a good portion of Mecklenburg County. Um, Todd basically in the primary won every county except Mecklenburg and lost the primary. Oh, damn. So that's because there's a lot of people on the Me- Mecklenburg is a very populated area. So that, that's what I'm saying. It, it's, uh, Charlotte is very blue. It's Charlotte's always been blue. They had a Republican mayor when I, when I came here, but it was, um, but yeah, it's, it's mostly like Charlotte. Raleigh, Durham, Asheville, Greensboro are very blue. And but when you get into the suburbs and some of the rural counties, it's very red. Yeah. So it very much reflects Middle America in a lot of ways here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's the interesting thing. That's the interesting. Um, that's the interesting thing about about politics lately. Just the last, you know, four years, even the last eight years. Because, you know, the and that's we're going to get into favorite elections here in, in a little bit. But like, the you, you know, the second the second uh, um, the second election, 2012, when Obama was running against Mitt Romney, it was very much the same, too, yeah. where middle America, you know, v- you know, voted red in a lot of cases. And so that's it's interesting that more urban populous areas have kind of shifted to you know again generalized speaking you know more blue and it's it's more rural counties that continue to go red it's it's interesting that a, a that a, a gop candidate can't carry a you know a rare you know can't carry some of these larger metropolitan areas and states even in yeah. states that they dominate for instance yeah. so like like for instance let's look at kentucky that's already been clawed for trump okay right by by a, by a margin right 62% of the vote um so but he lost he lost lexington and he lost louisville yeah okay so indiana which was just called that got him the 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 next electoral uh uh, electoral votes that he's got he again large margin right 60 percent of the vote for the whole state indianapolis evansville blue fort wayne went red but okay I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this exercise one more time. Okay. Uh huh. Nebraska. Fifty uh, is 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 leaning. It hasn't been called yet, but um, probably, it's gonna go. Called, in. They 51%. called. The AP called it. They called Nebraska. Okay, they, called Nebraska. Okay. They said one. They called Nebraska. Yes. Okay. Omaha and Lincoln. Omaha and Lincoln. Blue. Yeah. Okay. I'm just now. I'm just gonna have fun with this. South Dakota, <laughs> Rapid City, Sioux Falls. Oh no, nope, nope. They no, they're white. They're, they're not called yet, but they're not called. Yet. <laughs> so, oh, man. what is it? Go, Isn't that go to Arkansas. Though? Go to Arkansas. I guarantee you, Arkansas, Little Rock's blue. Uh, and maybe Fort Smith. Little Rock is definitely blue. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Before I even click on this, I at Fort Smith, I guarantee is red. It is and red. Right jo- and I guarantee Jonesboro's red too. Jonesboro's red, yes. Before I even click on this, let, am I right? You're right. Okay, I'm gonna click on it now. Oh, oh yeah, I am. Oh, Jonesboro. Whew. Yeah, that is red. <laughs> that's 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 way red. And then Little Rock's leaning blue right now. That's yeah. crazy. 
Yeah. And 62% at 60, he's going to win 62-34. There's some, I mean, these are some landslide, landslide topples. That's what, that's where the popular vote's coming in, Coop. We were talk, we talking about the popular vote overall. Is, I mean, the, the, the states that Trump is winning, he's winning by a lot. There, and yeah, and uh, there's no question, um, he, the urban vote, I mean, you're right. There's no question on that. Um, we've seen that as a trend probably for a long time. It's It's been a trend. It seems to get more and more prevalent every time. I mean, Virginia is a great example of that. Pull up the Virginia map a second. And look how much red they, is in the they state. Call, and they called it already because because Northern Virginia um, went blue. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it, it, that's a great that's example. Yeah, because great... Roanoke, Richmond, Norfolk, they're all red. They're all leaning yeah. red. And yeah, I yeah. already called it. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you have some odd, you have some odd states, you know, that, that will be blue for whatever reason. But, um, you know, interesting what's happening. So, so yeah, um, right now, AP has not updated the 131 to 98 yet. Um, I don't know if some of the other networks have, I've, I've seen some other variations right now it is, but those 10 states are the absolute Trump needs the Royal flush from those 10 cards to win it. I think there's no question based on what we see. That's his path to the hidden is another Royal flush to happen. Um, big Scott joined us. Yeah. Yes. Big Scott. He is so, smoking a Lancero. Yeah. I'm smoking a super Lancero. So bear, you know, one thing I wanted to say, and again, I'm not trying to get one side of candidate or the other. Joe Biden, right? Um, you have to look at where he is at 1021 Eastern time, 921 Central time. And he has the presidency is in his sights right now. Mm-hmm. Could you in February, at the end of February, before we did the Super Tuesday show, could anyone have seen this? His campaign looked dead before that South Carolina primary. He looked like he was on the, the, the campaign was falling apart. It was. I mean, they, they didn't know what to do. And for, he turned it around. It's a historic comeback. Of, like when, when I was on, the, we saw this unveiling on Super Tuesday. And I said, as we started talking about the results, I said, I said, Bear, the pass to his nomination is over. He's going to, he had a pass because he basically, he had that royal flush that night I talked about, right? Right. You, you can't, this is a political comeback that we haven't, I mean, Bush in 88 had a comeback. He had a rough start to the campaign in 88, the primary season, but he got it turned around. I don't think it was at the point with Biden, he's fourth, but they're talking about shutting down, you know, campaigning. It, it wasn't a good scenario. You got to give the, you got to give the guy in his, his campaign credit. And, and the same way, I'll give Trump the same. People had him dead a month ago and He's not out of this. This is not over yet. So no, no, yeah. not at all. So I, I mean, if he wins the presidency, Biden wins that presidency. I mean, wow. I mean, it, you, you, you got to look at that. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it was really what was really surprising to me, um, and it, it's surprising that it's come to this too, Coop. I mean, if you think about it, something that's come up quite a bit historically so like you know when you're the time frame that you're talking about in february right we're talking about we were talking about bernie sanders who's a thousand years old right okay like was basically was basically you know leading the charge there elizabeth warren who's a thousand years old and now you've got two candidates you know who are pushing you know a thousand years old (laughs) a thousand years old the piece right right that you know and that's when you kind of look to – that's why you kind of look to who they're the, – the ticket, right? And um, and I'm not sure – I'm sure someone's going to – someone's going to tell me. Um, but that's where – that's where I actually am really grateful from, from – from, you know, from a constituent perspective that both candidates, you know, selected someone younger, significantly so i'm not sure how old mike pence is but he's he's obviously considerably younger than trump um but uh we all know that kamala harris is significantly younger than biden because you know 
you know, Biden's a thousand years old. So, um, but that's, you know, if, if, if I'm a constituent and I'm, and I'm concerned about that, I wonder, like, like, do you think, or am I just totally off base? Do you think that that was enough of a factor that where people were actually starting to look at the vice president and the vice presidential uh, nominee in Harris to determine who they were going to vote for? I, I often think it's not that. This is my opinion. I think it's if the vice president is someone that they can't connect with, they won't vote for that possibly candidate. Like, you know, I go back with um, Sarah Palin is a good example of that. Yeah, um, 100%. You know, she, just, she just came out of the gate and struck out, right? Uh, she just never connected with the people she needed to connect with. Her base she connected with, right? But those people, you know, said, what? Well, they go to her as a, really her as a VP? Um, I think they looked at that, right? Oh. Pence is 61. I would not have guessed that. I would have put him in his 50s. Wow. Yeah, he's still relatively. I want to look, look that. I, I want to look that good when I'm 61. You know, I go back again. If Biden picked Bob Casey instead of Kamala, <laughs> we could be looking at a different. I, I'm just saying, you know, if he had picked Bob Casey, it would have been more. I mean, again, I would have. He had California. So, you know, you can look at it like that. I still think like yeah. Hillary should have picked Rendell Casey four years ago. I yeah, for, hmm, I wasn't yeah I like I I I I wasn't totally shocked that that Harris was the was the was the candidate that he picked. I wasn't either. I think was, everyone knew it was going to be her when he said a woman. Yeah. It was curious though that. Like he didn't need her to carry California. Yeah. He didn't need. He doesn't need any. He didn't need anyone to carry the West Coast. So, but I, I think, I think you know, you 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 pulled out the Palin suggestion there. Like there was a real danger. And I'm not. I don't have a candidate to, to suggest like who's who's the equal. Right. Like who would have been the equivalent to to Palin for Biden? You know. I'm sure people start throwing out some names, but you, you could. Like, I mean, I, but the what? Yeah, like I, I, I get. Okay, I, I guess he could have gone like something really, like really extreme, right? Like he could have gone AOC, like that. That, that I, I think would have that yeah, would have been a huge polarizing mistake. That would've been, it would have been big polarized, yeah. I mean, they would have um, had field day on her, like they and, had on Quail, yeah. And, I mean, she wasn't even in the running, so like I'm saying, like I'm just trying to like. Like I don't think out of all the out of all the high profile, maybe Warren. I mean, because Warren was a consideration, right? She was she was vetted. She was vetted by his by his uh, by his yep. committee. Um, not heavily, I don't think, but she was up there in the in in, in there. So maybe she would have been that polarizing. I don't know, but like I just I'm just think I just think like he didn't need Harris to to win the West Coast, like at all. Um. And so that that was curious as to why why he well, picked her. There may be another thing where he is looking at her, and, and maybe he can attract female. You know, people want a female candidate in some of these swing states. So you look, and she is a strong female candidate. There, there's no question about it. Um, whether you like her or not, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Um, right. I I you could argue her likability factor is polarizing, but her. In terms of her presence as a senator, I think people know she's got a presence in that Senate. I mean, yeah. You know, speaking of vice presidents, Coop, so like, you know, one of the, you know, one of the topical debates tonight, we were having fun as we had, it, well, I was having fun with it with, you know, the picking of my cigars tonight. Um, but, you know, the second presidential debate was a completely different story. But after the first presidential debate, which was, it didn't matter what side of the aisle you were on. That was a that was a shit show, man. It was just crazy. That was a circus. But I don't. Did you watch the vice presidential debate? I did not. That is what that is what a debate supposed to be. Yeah, and I saw you clips know? of it. I don't want to say I didn't, but I didn't watch it from the start. Of it, but it, yeah, um, like they both both polished, both were polished, both were perfect. You know, in professional court, it got sporty a couple times. You know. As it should, right? In a debate, you you know you can't you can't agree on everything, and you can't be best buddies. Um, so that 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 was that for me. From like I was thinking about my my love of debate and my love of discussion, that was real. That was entertaining. That was that was a really 
that was a fun watch for me. What was what was we're, we're getting to know some of the elections. What was the best presidential debate ever in your lifetime? Like the best two that went went toe to toe. The best presidential debate in my lifetime. Yeah. The one that was um, like, wow, this is a really good debate. I I really enjoy I really enjoy George W going up against Al Gore. That, that's one I had too. I really, I really enjoyed that debate. I really enjoyed that discussion. You know, le- looking back, you know, for all of, you know, for all the criticism that he got and stuff, you, 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 the one thing that I loved about, one thing I loved about George W. Bush was, is, I, I think he, I think, and I think if you asked him, you know, a decade later, over a decade later, rather, like removed, like, I think overall, I think he, I think he truly enjoyed being president. Like, and when I say enjoyed, I mean, like, well, he wasn't president I, when he debated think, Gore. He wasn't president. Right, right. He wasn't. No, but I'm talking about like, I, I, like even that, that's what I'm talking about with that debate. Like he seemed to really be enjoying being part of the race. He enjoyed it, it was, and, and when I say enjoy, like, I mean, joy, like literally the, the emotion joy yeah. and you know, was something he, that he, I think he carried with him. You know, and when his dad ran against Clinton, his dad lost it at some point. It was like, you know what? He was, you could see he was frustrated. You could see it with, with HW. You're right. Though, and it was a big comparison when, when W was up there. But I remember, you know, you just felt that HW was there 12 years and Clinton was, he, was connecting in ways that, you know, no one ever thought would imagine. Um, I always thought HW kind of, I don't want to say mailed it in, but you could see this was, a lot, it, was it was taxing on him. Uh, Jay Davis throwing out the quote, Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. That Well, that was the, the one. 80, during the 80th. That was the vice presidential debate. Yeah. I was going to say the 88 yeah. debates were the best. It was the, the VP one with Quayle and, and Benston. And the presidential one with Dukakis and HW, that was that was fantastic. Those debates. See, I need to go back on YouTube and watch those because I, I I was I was too young. It was during my lifetime, but yeah. I was too young. Yeah. yeah. To really but, go back and. So let's. But, I think uh, this, yeah, I was gonna say this is a good segue for what we were talk about our favorite elections, and then we picked. Okay. I think we picked three each. Um, yes. We could let's we'll alternate this is what we'll do. Uh, okay. So I'll start it off. Um, I'm a little older than you, but in my that 1976 election, which I did watch as a youngster, but watched a lot of the coverage years later older. And I appreciated what that 1976 election brought to the table. Um, I remember the brokered convention, the Republican brokered convention where, you know, Reagan was Reagan. Reagan, uh, Reagan's kind of a joke with that. I'll say a little later. Um, where that was so historic and, you know, we were coming off the Nixon, we were coming off a president who was the first president who wasn't elected into that office. Um, you had this peanut fall from Jimmy Carter, who uh. he, he this is what he'd say, he'd go, hi, my name is Jimmy Carter and I'm running for president. And that, that's what he, and it was, it was, you know, and, and Ford was trying to basically salvage you know, what a very damaged presidency that he inherited it. Um, Reagan, Reagan has this, has this surgeon there that, um, you know, um, I, you know, um, it was just, like I said, and you don't appreciate it. Like I, I thought every election was going to be like that as an eight year old watching that is what I'm getting at. Um, when yeah. you go back and watch, and there's old news coverage out there, Walter Cronkite, uh, you know, um, Max Robinson, ABC, John Chancellor, you can watch, and you can watch how those conventions were going and how those elections were going. Um, it was, it was a fascinating election and, um, it, it, you know, Carter ended up winning the presidency then, um, which changed a lot in this country. So I enjoyed, like I said, watching that race, but going back and watching it, that's one you should go check out. Okay. 
Now, there's going to be a generational gap because I'm older than you. So I recognize that. No, no. I, you know, I think that uh, what Jimmy Carter is, uh, Jimmy Carter is the, is the poster child for doing more out of office than he ever did in it. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't even think that's up for debate. Like, I don't even think, like, even if you're the biggest Jimmy Carter fan in the world, I don't think you can. I mean, this man did more out of office than he ever did in it. He's more beloved out of office than he was ever in it. Right. And I think, I don't even think you can really say that about. I, I think the last 10 years, you gotta, he, you know, obviously he's gotten older, right? Yeah. But, well, well do you think, I mean, like, because, like, I mean, is Obama more beloved out of office than he was in it? No, I'd say it's, I'd still, I'd still say the affection either way is, 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 is the same. I, I like, think he's people starting, felt the same way. I, I think he's starting to build up some of that elder statesman stuff, Obama. I, I do. I don't think it was there four years ago as much as, you know, maybe two years ago as now. I don't know. I think he took a little time off and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if he's more likable is what I'm kind of getting at. You know, people have opinions about him one way or another. You know, Obama was a very polarizing president. I mean, there's no question you could yeah. argue on his record, but people hate, a lot of people hated the guy. No, that's true. And a lot of people hated W too. A lot, of, people, a lot of hate. Remember the hate towards especially W? Especially in the last two years. They told W not even to go to the convention. The sitting president didn't even, if I'm not mistaken, did not go to the McCain convention, if I'm not mistaken. That's how, that's how bad it was. They told the sitting yeah. president to stay home. Yeah, and, and I think I think he's definitely more beloved now. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, I think Clinton has dipped just because he he just really hasn't been Clinton really hasn't been present in the spotlight at all. And and, and to a degree, you could say the same thing about W as well. They've really they've really kind of taken a back seat. But you know, um, even Richard Nixon started to polish back up that reputation in the eighties. When Nixon started, like they didn't invite Nixon back to the convention. Don't get me wrong, but Nixon became a little more that elder statesman in, in the eighties. Can you can you can you blame them for no, considering I, what happened? No, absolutely not, absolutely not. But there were other things. You know, Nixon did did you know Nixon's role? Nixon, this country's forgiving on things, and don't get there are probably still people who you know hate hate Nixon, but but. Nixon's reputation started to change in, in, in the 80s. It mm -hmm. took a while. So uh, there is starting to be some separation, Coop, in some of these battleground states. In North Carolina, we're finally seeing, seeing some separation. 92% reporting. It's going to be close, but it's Donald Trump, 49.9%. They're going they're, they're to have to. Yeah, it's going to be interesting if they certify that one because it's that close. Uh, Texas, 71% revoting. It's still, uh, still, uh, El Paso County still hasn't come in yet at all. But Donald that's Trump a lot of votes. To, but still, it's but closer Donald than, Trump started. Yeah. Uh, Trump picked up some more electoral votes. He's got 108 in the bag. Yeah, well, who did he pick up from? He, he got, he must have gotten, uh, he 10 more. He picked up Missouri. Yeah, 10 more from Missouri. He picked Missouri. up Missouri. Okay. It's a it's 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 still too close to call this election at ten thirty seven nine thirty seven, on ten thirty seven Eastern nine thirty seven. They're calling they're calling they're well it's fifty eight percent of the vote to forty percent right now, but they're calling it with forty six percent reporting. That's crazy. But yeah. like that's kind of like Virginia. Virginia called. New Jersey got called early. New, Jer New Hampshire's still leaning, man. New Hampshire's what, still leaning. What is heavy? What what heavy? Is going, yeah, this is that is an upset, and and that could play a very key role. Oh, I know it's only four votes. The key that yeah. Arizona's still pretty heavy. Arizona, seventy-three percent of the votes in coop, fifty-three percent of the vote leading to Biden, forty-five percent Trump. Listen, those electoral that's 11 votes, are, votes. Those electoral votes are going to Joe Biden. People don't want to hear. That's like that's when. Yeah, they're going to Biden. So if Arizona, so if okay, so if Arizona goes. Montana's leaving head. Uh, Montana's leaning heaven by heavy Biden right now too. That's only three. New Hampshire is four. Iowa is six, and it's that's heavy Biden. Minnesota's Minnesota's going Biden too, man. Sixty percent of the vote. Yeah. Forty percent when voting. That's ten. So that's ten, 
six, four, three, eleven. In a close West, race, the West, the West Coast is going to. So Sean Miles is from Idaho, man. Nothing's Idaho hasn't come onto the board yet. Sean yeah. Miles representing the great state of Idaho, man. Yeah. Idaho could Idaho could play a part in the selection, man. Yeah. I'm surprised Florida should be getting called soon is what I guess. I, I can't I can't believe Florida hasn't been called yet. This is ridiculous. Well, it may be want- it may be because the uh because South Florida's votes are leading they haven't find i don't know what the county's votes are in F- south florida uh i'm i'm really surprised that miami's blue am i weird oh it's i thought that my i it's, thought miami would be red no miami's blue well, not, you know. miami west palm orlando you, uh, tampa you, you, jacksonville tallahassee all blue yeah if forget if there was a cigar industry in miami for a second it would be blue if you think cigar industry then you're surprised well, yeah, because that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, yep. Yeah. So, uh, they have not called it yet, but uh, but you know, Florida's always been a closer. I mean, it's been. Cl- I mean, Florida's been close for a long time as a state. Going, this is tw- that's twenty years. Yeah, you know. I'll tell you about. Ohio and I, Ohio and Florida, I think, are going to be battleground states for yeah. like the the rest of both of our lifetimes, man. Yeah. I don't. So, think the spirit of bipartisanship, it. by the way, in the spirit of bipartisanship, I want, I forgot to mention too. So, uh, your favorite color is pl- pink. So, I'm I'm drinking some uh, grapefruit seltzer. But right. my favorite color is green. So, I'm also drinking some green seltzer. Yeah, later. I'm, so in the spirit drink- of bipartisanship, I'm spreading it around here. In, in the spirit of bipartisanship, I'm drinking a uh, diet lemon lime soda. Uh, oh, look at you. Yeah, so uh, I do have the Diet Coke, though, <laughs> coming up. So uh, I wanted to have something a little lighter than a cola drinking, um, smoking this. Very good. This is an excellent Lancero, by the way. Uh, a a box purchasable Lancero. I wish it was still out there. This is a this Super Lancero is fantastic in this blend. Um, I'll even go to say it may be one of the best sizes I've had in the Sterling blend. So I'm being, if it, being very transparent. This is a very good cigar. So Michael uh, t- uh, and the team at Ned Sherman said basically the final goodbye. Um, he, the rest of the staff, I think, was finally finished up their time there. And, you know, I think it's um, – I think that the, the door is finally shut on Nat Sherman and everything. Yeah. Officially. Mm-hmm. Um, got a couple of good free agents out there right now. You got Mike – you got Mike, Michael Herklotz and um, Glenn Loop. Different types of free agents, obviously. I, I, uh, but yeah. Um. Okay, Bear. Going back. Um. Give me one of your favorite elections. Yeah, I'm sorry. We got off. We got off base there. No, no, that was an um, important so, update. That's we so, bear with us, audience. We're trying to kind of move a few things around tonight, just to keep it going. So I, so I, okay. So I was born in 19, I was born in 1983. So my early childhood was during the, the, the Reagan US of A. Right. And, um, but I remember going into an an elementary school, really, my school was really, really great about this. They, they really made the 92 election very much a part of the school curriculum, like from kindergarten to sixth grade, it was, you know, we, we, we had, we had parades and we each picked candidates and we made posters and it was real. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And I remember that. And I remember, um, I remember that my candidate in 1992, (laughs) um, you know, at uh, the ripe, the ripe old and wise age of nine years old, I had uh, was Bill Clinton, and I had I made a poster. I didn't even know what Bill Clinton looked like, but I made a poster of what I thought he looked like, wearing like the Uncle Sam hat, an American flag, you know, Bill Clinton for president, and we had, like I said, we like I said, we we had parades and. And, you know, it was it was a they really they really brought the spirit of the election into the curriculum of the whole school. Like the whole school participated in this group. It was really a lot of fun. Like I remember it yeah. uh, very vividly. And um, 
And my, I remember my mother asking me at the time, and I had no idea, but my, my mother and my father uh, both voted for, uh, for George, uh, for uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. And, right. um, and um, my mother asked me, she's like, why, 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 why are you quote unquote voting for, for Bill Clinton? Of course, I'm it's way too young to vote, but why, why, why are you voting for Bill Clinton? And I remember very vividly, my answer was because I wanted something new. I knew that George Bush was the president already. I was like, oh, it's time for something new. It's time for somebody else to get in there and do, you know, someone else to be president. I was a little bit like that with Jimmy Carter, by the way, in 76. Yeah. And and uh, and I remember my mom saying, like, well, you don't (laughs) like my mom having a discussion with me, like, like, like it could actually like I could actually carry us, you know, an actual political discussion at nine years old. She's like, well, you don't think that George Bush has done a good job? And I was like. No, I think, you know, uh, like, I don't remember my answer to that. I just remember it was like, saying, yeah, that, no, new, 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 somebody new. new. President. And new I president, think, yeah. And, and if I look back, you know, with, you know, in hindsight to, to nine-year-old me, I, I think the way, reason I connected with Bill Clinton as opposed to George Herbert Walker and then the 30, looking back to 37-year-old me, I look back and think, you know, had I voted in that election, I probably would have voted for, to keep the to keep the president. But um, like, I think it's because I connected with him because even though I didn't know what he looked like, I knew that young. I young. I mean, at the time he was, you know, he was one of the he was the young, like Obama beat his record, right? Like Obama was, it was it was it's Jack Kennedy, Bill Clinton, and Obama are the three youngest presidents if i'm not mistaken correct i think that statistic is right uh is teddy roosevelt in there too teddy roosevelt that was four someone looked at someone someone google that someone yeah. google that yeah um but like okay three three of the four three of the top right, four. right. okay so, so roosevelt throw roosevelt in there is the 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 potential outlier so i think it was because i connected to him because he was younger you know he it, it had this 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 it seemed like he had this youthful Ted, energy teddy about was it and, Teddy was the youngest. Teddy's still the youngest. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was, I think that's why I connected to him perhaps at such a young age, but I just remember that election being really like, it was really fun. It was a really fun experience for me. It was fun for my classmates. And even back then, like, you know, there were, you know, like there were some people that were the, the, the Bush kids and there were some kids that were the Clinton kids and, and and we had a little fun with it, like I said. Um, but that's what, like I think, like even today, I think that's still what I miss. As we were kind of talking about at the top of the show, about this this lack of this lack of sportsmanship, this lack of you know appreciation yeah. for, for for each other's candidates and stuff. And granted, we were kids, right? We didn't know any better. Right. Um, literally, didn't know any better. And so it, you know, it, you know, <laughs> but. I, there's two there's two things i want to bring into this discussion with the 92 election one isn't is that too much to ask for us to have almost like childlike tendencies you know like well hey, I, I, you know that that you know no i think it, I mean, that was a fun year 92 right you had right. you had bill clinton jogging into mcdonald's for hamburgers right you had bill clinton <laughs> you had bill you had bill clinton um going around uh on mtv right i you, you know, George W. was coming off a uh, a big victory in the Gulf War. I mean, there was it was a fun election um, to be a part. And then you had the whole the whole what do you call it Ross Perot thing happening in the middle of that, right? It, that was a fun. That was life a fun, is like a life is like a potato chip. Yeah. Oh my gosh! The, the, yeah, I mean, it was exactly. You got yeah, right. It's like a potato. Those the Ross. What was he doing? The whiteboards or whatever he was doing. It was mm. you. That was a that was a this was not a fun year for an election for a lot of the COVID obviously threw a whole thing into it, but it was not a fun year. It was a nasty election. The four years ago was a nasty election, right? Um, Mm -hmm. We've had nasty elections for a long time. That was a fun election. When you look back on it, right. If you were a Bush fan, you weren't happy with the way it came out. If you were a Clinton fan, you were very happy, but it was a fun election. Yeah, that that was it. Was definitely a more. It was definitely more of a fun election. It was, it was, you know, 
it, like I said, it just, the, and, and, and I think it's actually in pretty indicative of the fact that, you know, later in life, they, 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 those two candidates continued a, a friendship until, it, until it, Bush's death it, recently. It didn't you know? surprise me. Like if you were to tell me like Obama and Romney would become friends, that would surprise me. You know, that would surprise me. But that one doesn't totally surprise me because it wasn't a very it had heated moments like any campaign did. They went at it like it. But but it was always there was a respect for both of the candidates. And, uh, you know, so, you know. That was it was that was a fun, fun year. Mm -hmm. You you talk about another fun election. The 80 election. Was a fun election too, um, you know. You had Ronald Reagan. It's, here's a funny story about the eighty election there. So, you ever watch the show All in the Family? Yeah, I've Ar seen reruns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Archie Bunker. So Archie Bunker on the show was the conservative, right? And if and I'm a big fan of this show, okay. So this is kind of getting a little deep. So. In 1976, he wasn't exactly, he was a big Richard Nixon guy. He wasn't exactly a Ford guy, right? So he's arguing with Meathead after the election about something else, right? And Meathead and him are going at it. And finally, Meathead says to him, You can't reason with, with, I can't reason with you. Here's a guy who didn't vote for Gerald Ford. He didn't vote for uh, um, Jimmy Carter. He wrote in Richard Nixon's name, right? And, Ar <laughs> and Archie's like, Blah, and, he, and he walks away and then Edith comes up to him and goes, Archie, did you really vote for Richard Nixon? And he goes, no, because I wrote in Regan, right? <laughs> right? And then, and then he called him Regan, right? Then, he go, then I guess there's another scene later on and they're arguing again. And at the end of the scene, he goes, this is right after the election. He goes, and you're going to get Regan in four years. You're going to get Regan in four years. And he was so prophetic. It turned out to be right. <laughs> you know, but if you watch that, it, it, it was kind of very humorous, right? How that all went. Um, that, was a, that was a fascinating election. You had Jimmy Carter challenged by Ted Kennedy in the primaries. Reagan had a little bit of a slow start to the primaries. Uh, George Bush gave him a challenge early on. He starts pulling the whole thing away. John Anderson, who's one of the Republicans going against Reagan, goes and decides to become independent. Um, and, you know, Jimmy Carter, is, you know, and then Reagan does, you know, Ra Reagan kind of really hammers him on the economy and hammers him on foreign policy. Reagan wins the election. And right then and there, the hostages from Iran are, are, um, are let go. And they let go because I think they were afraid. Word is they were afraid of Reagan. Right. And Reagan told Carter, he goes, I want you to finish the job and make sure these guys come home. You know, this was this. You got the hostages home. Not me. He gave Jimmy Carter all the credit with that. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was another beautiful thing to how that campaign went um, in, in 1980. That was a that was a that was a and that was a close a lot going into there. A lot of people thought Jimmy Carter might hold the presidency that night. There were, there were some people that thought Jimmy Carter had enough to win that to win the reelection. It turned out Reagan Reagan pulled it out. I don't think it was a landslide like 84, but but he pulled it out. So but but again, I think there was a. I, I like the way it kind of finished. It had a, it had a better ending um, that election. I think then, you know, it, it good. That's a transfer of power. Um, you know, I, I, I left me a positive thing with our, our process with that. Yeah. I think, I think that's what I was thinking that, you know, and, and, and it still has yet to be determined, right? Cause I mean, the, the election is far from over. Um, but I thought that the, 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 the COVID, situation the um you know the the, the whole racial tensions in this country being at an all-time high right now like i thought that was that was the equivalent if we want to back like because history repeats itself right i thought that was the historical equivalent to the the hostage situation of iran because in yeah. a lot of ways that did that issue it did. helped it yes it, it, it that that played a major part in the election um, so I think like, that's what I was thinking that history was kind of, it was looking to repeat itself. And again, it, it, it could very well be the case there. So, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you on that. Um, 
You got another election there? Yeah, I've got two more. Okay, I've I got, got two. two I, I, I got one more after that. Yeah. So. So so um yeah the my 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 next favorite one was was two thousand you know um you know George Bush coming from my state you know George W Bush coming from my state representing my state um beloved governor here and for him to run um against you know the incumbent vice president of Al Gore was, you know, was a lot of fun to watch from, you know, from, from a Texan point of view, right? You know, I was Texan, my, the vice, you know, the presidential candidate was Texan. Uh, and that was just, that was really exciting to see. And uh, like I said, that was some really fun, the, the, the debates were really fun. Um, I really enjoyed um, the whole <laughs> Al Gore inventing the internet speech and <laughs> thing and, and, um, a lot of fun poked at him over that still to this day. Uh, I mean, that joke is that joke is forever running, right? Like, you know, it, it yes, you know, Al Gore that, invented, Al Gore the, invented internet. the internet. Like, if you ask the, a trivia question, that will be one of the big, great trivia questions that's incorrect, but yes, it's uh, it, I mean, it's it surpassed the Dan Quell potato thing, right? <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. Dan Quell misspelling potato. It, it surpassed the Jack Kennedy thing. I even think, like, to a certain extent. Where, where's like, the beef with Gary Hart? Uh, well, like, he didn't, yeah. So I, I I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed, you know, seeing someone from my home state, you know, take the White House. Like, it was just, again, very, you know, still very early in my youth. I was, you know, you know, I was in high school when he was elected. I had, I, I didn't vote, right? Same, same thing. I didn't vote until, um. I didn't vote until 2004. 2004 was the first presidential election that I voted in. And um, so it was, you know, again, still outside looking in, right? It was really, it was just a lot of fun to see, it was a lot of fun to see a fellow Texan, you know, take the White House. You know, that was just a really, yeah, it was a really, really, really fun debates. It was a really great election um, process. The whole, I and mean, it was highly contentious with the, the ballots and the recounts and like it was just we we had ne i had never seen an election like that in my lifetime where you know my my daughter she was eight years old she wanted to stay up and watch till the president got named and i said yeah you could stay up you know you'll probably know by 11 o'clock <laughs> two weeks later yeah exactly <laughs> yep yeah so uh yeah the uh but i agree yeah that was another that was and that was an election that changed elections in a lot of ways uh, it, it put the focus on these close states, these battleground states, and Chad, Chad votes and things like that. Um, it, it changed. It changed a lot. I'm sorry, the yeah. 2000. Yeah, the 2000. Yeah. So the, my my last election that I I picked, Coop, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. You can do your last one. Yeah. The that I just really, um, I I really enjoyed it and I was sorely disappointed. We've already kind of alluded to it just because. of of uh, who they decided to pick as a vice presidential candidate um, was was 2008. Um, you know, we talked. I talked about the the youthful energy of Bill Clinton in '92. Right. You know, Obama brought that to the table. Um, McCain, with you know, McCain. I mean, can you? I mean, do you think it's inaccurate for me to say that Mc, John McCain is probably you know the most beloved politician? in the last tw 20 years? Because Obama was very polarizing, as you said, right? He was very loved by the people who loved him, but very much hated by the people who hated him. Probably him and Joe Lieberman I'd put in that category where they can reach on both sides of the aisle. They had yeah, a and, yeah. But I, yeah, but even but even Lieberman was very, was very polarizing. To some extent he was, po he, yeah. John and, McCain could be polarizing. Um, John McCain could be polarizing. Certainly. Yeah, but I think he was. I think he was mostly. I think he was mostly beloved, and he was definitely respected by those who were in opposition to him. Well, like, there I, was and, talk of Kerry putting him on. Wasn't it Kerry or one of them? There was talk about him putting him on a ballot uh, on the other side at one point. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I. 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 I the. Um, and that that is a the the that is the the was the quintessential point in the election i think in 2020 you know hindsight being 2020 that if if mccain had picked anybody else 
anybody else to be the vice presidential candidate. Um, and there were certainly a lot of good candidates out there. And he went with Sarah Palin. Right. But I think if Palin wasn't the vice presidential candidate, I, th- I I'm, I, I still say that John McCain would have won that would have won that election. It was tough because he would have been close. It was they it were been trying, close. they were trying every way possible to tie McCain to W in the economy. It was a tough one. Um, I contend if McCain ran in twelve, he might have beaten Obama instead of oh uh, eight. But you could make that argument. P- Palin, Palin, and, and something went wrong with the McCain campaign coming out of the convention. It never he 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 those debates were very close with Obama. You know, look, everyone, no one loses a debate, right? Everyone will always claim victory in a debate and supporters will will claim victory like for the people they back. Right. You ever think like did any did, did anyone who ever backed a candidate come out and say my candidate um, just Gosh. went out there and laid an egg in a debate? The only time I heard that from some people was was that Obama with the Obama debates with McCain. And it was like, it was, it wasn't like he did bad. It was like, you know, I expected a little more from John McCain. And it was like, he, it, it was almost like he just, you know, Obama, Obama just seemed a lot hungrier at that point. I don't know if, if it's it, something didn't click with the McCain campaign those last six weeks. I, and I, I know I, that's just my opinion. You could tell me I'm wrong, but yeah, that was my opinion with that. Palin had to got a lot to do with that. I think Palin ended up putting, I think then he realized that was a mistake. Yeah, there, no, it, it really was. Several, it ended up was, it ended up being the nail it ended up being the nail in the coffin. Yeah, yeah. I think. You know, if he had picked Romney, it would have been a very interesting scenario. Mm-hmm. It would have been a very interesting scenario if he had picked Romney, who was the guy I think who was lobbying for the job at that point. And that that's an interesting thing observation too. Like if he wasn't if he had not run against Obama if 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 the if the Romney Ryan ticket had not run against Obama Biden. That's a strong ticket. That's a strong ticket in sixteen. Yeah. If it hadn't been, if it hadn't been Trump, uh, that's a strong. That would have been um, Ryan would have been too young uh, for 08, I think. But I mean, yeah. that's a you know that was yeah. a that was a that was a really likable ticket. Like if you're yeah. if you're a GOP if you're a GOP backer, like that was a really likable ticket. Like those are two those are two very solid individuals. Um, I mean, we talked about McCain being beloved. You know, you know, I don't think Romney was necessarily beloved. I wouldn't necessarily put that adjective on him. But, you know, you know, I, I've heard several people from both sides of the aisle, you know, pundits from both sides of the aisle say this about say this uh, in a complimentary fashion toward Mitt Romney, uh, that there really isn't there really is there. You know, he's probably one of the most, inte- you know, integritous candidates. Yeah. politicians you know in, in the modern age yeah i mean like the guy just doesn't the guy just doesn't do anything wrong you can disagree with the guy yeah right but he just doesn't do anything wrong <laughs> like, yeah. like and and um so and it's 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 funny to, you, okay you can say that about a person and then he he loses in the fashion that he did in 12 yeah no so. it's true all right we have some big updates that have happened yeah um if you were if you went to vote um, a few minutes ago in California, Oregon and Washington, um, and you did and you were like one of the last people in line and went out to your car. Um, those races were called by the time you got to your car, because Washington, Oregon and California have all gone Biden as expected. And mm-hmm. um, Biden has now the presidency starting to get in his sights right now. It's 209, 112. Um, I'm seeing a few other things. I know Jay's saying he's seeing a 207, 112, 119. Uh, we're going by the AP 209-112. Uh, Idaho has gone for Trump. And Montana, Trump is now in the lead in Montana. So so they're 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 calling Idaho for Trump with one percent reporting. Yeah, ninety but it's uh, that dominant. Yeah. It's ninety two percent. Yeah. Of the yeah. Vote. Like, if you went out and I can put Idaho into those four states as well. So if you went out to vote, right, 
and you were like, it's like <laughs> if you, imagine, you, imagine you go freaking wait online for an hour and a half, like in Oregon, to go vote for Trump. You go out to your car, and it's like it's called already. Could you at least give let, let give let the people get home? Yeah, let go home and get get home and have dinner. Idaho, like that's that that's that too. Like 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 if you're the one of the six percent. <laughs> Dude, that's just so insane. I I, I know because I've lived this in New Jersey. One one percent. What what was in New Jersey? What would happen? Yeah, they they yeah. With two percent of the precincts reporting, uh, the the race is called. (laughs) Good (laughs) lord. I mean, if you're Donald, one percent of the precincts in Idaho have reported. It's the state's over. It's done. (laughs) Like just, (laughs) sorry, man. That's just comical. Oh, I mean, California, you didn't even... <laughs> California, like, oh, yeah, 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 if, yeah, if you're, so if you're a Biden supporter in Idaho, or you're a Trump supporter in the West Coast, yeah. like, just like, yeah. what the fuck was and, the point? And here, and here, to, <laughs> and here's a big up, I, I, I don't know if this is an upset, maybe you could tell me, uh, New Hampshire went for Trump, I mean, for Biden, they called it for Biden. They called it, they called it, man. It, I, it, I'm saying it has to be an upset. It's that it's a small so two, upset, so, but it's an upset. Yeah, it's an upset. So I, I think Biden, Biden dominating Trump in Arizona. They haven't called it yet, but 53 yeah. percent, 73 percent reporting. That looks like it's you. You said it a minute ago, Coop. You said it's going to go Biden. That's yeah. 11 in the bag. That's 221. That puts him at two. It, that puts him at 220. That puts him that puts Biden at 220. If he takes I, Iowa. Yeah, that's two twenty six. If he takes Minnesota, that's enough. That's two. That's two thirty six. Right. Add in now. You add in Nevada, and uh, Nevada's not even on the board yet. Nevada's on the board yet, but you, you, like I said, the presidency is in Biden's sights. Is what I will say right now. So, so, uh, so but Trump Jay is, was saying yeah. a minute ago that. Pennsylvania won't be decided till Friday. There's something. Ab- so I don't know what that's about. There's, there's, there's something some- going on Pennsylvania. But I mean, there's still a lot of votes to be counted in Pennsylvania right now. They only have 45 percent of the vote counted. Um, so same with Michigan and w- Michigan and Wisconsin are, are Trump leads. But but close. Um. George is another is still one. Trump right now too. Only, but they're still holding firm at seventy four percent of the I'm vote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a limb and I'm gonna say Trump holds on to Texas. I think yeah, Trump, it's gonna be close. Trump's gonna hold. I think it's gonna be close. I think there's gonna be a real. I mean, if you're the, if you're the Republican Party in there, you got some, you got some, you got some work to do in this state right now. You, you, you do. Um, same in. I said the same. Now North Carolina is incredibly close. Um, but I think Trump and I predicted a Biden win in North Carolina. I'm starting to see that one lean towards Trump, but I don't know if Donald Trump is flipped enough to win the presidency here. I mean, the, the that's, if Biden, if, if Biden comes back, there's there's six percent of the precincts in North Carolina that need yeah. to come in. If Biden ta- if Biden somehow pulls out North Carolina, if Biden takes North Carolina, the election's over. By the way, yeah. By the way, the blaming going on with Steve Soccer. There's no blame here. You look. The, there's no fault. Uh, I don't know who Steve voted for. <laughs> I don't want to pick on him, but um, let's put it like this. If the cigar industry was behind Trump in New Hampshire, they didn't do enough for him. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, That's an upset. I mean, you, like I said, these, clo- these small states may have more of a role than we thought. Like these are some small states that are playing key roles right now. Iowa, New Hampshire. I don't think we thought that. I'm still laughing about Idaho. Idaho. It's just, just fucking one percent. It's Trump. It's a Trump state. Trump wins it. Trump. Trump, win. Trump, Trump, Trump gets the four electoral I votes. Don't know. No. Okay. So they. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at something's weird in Idaho right now, right? So I'm looking at the votes here. It says Biden's got 55.3 percent of the vote, right? And Trump has 42.2. But they declared him the winner. It looks like Boise is the only place that counted the votes. That's why. <laughs> It's all, Boise is the only one reporting. <laughs> Sean, Sean Miles, what's going Sean, on with your home Sean, state, man? What is hell is? Do they not know to count? Do they okay, have a Utah is, just got called. Utah just got called Donald Trump. Sixty-five right. percent in the bag. Six votes so, going to Trump. So Trump picks up another six uh, votes. Uh, he goes up to one eighteen right now. Um, <laughs> by, by, there's work to do for Trump tonight. <laughs> the potato party. Do they have a potato party in Idaho? 
Oh, we're freaking out. Sean's going to kill us. Sean's going to kill us. <laughs> um, Okay. So let's do a couple of things right now. Um, Let's first, let me just give a reminder for the contest for people who've joined in, right? So we have another Vega Fina contest. And I and for folks who joined a little later, I'm going to repeat what I said. When you enter a Cigar Coop contest, right, you have the ability of not, of having easy ways to win, right? Very easy, okay? And, and the key to it is, Go to Google, go to Cigar Coop for the answer. It's there, right? Um, but I want to mention that, um, you know, Vega Fina, they are, um, they're part of um, Tobacco Lara USA, Altidus. Um, they are a great partner of, of this show. They just released the Vega Fina 1998, five country blend, three year age tobaccos from Ecuador, Indonesia, Colombia, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic. They're doing a great giveaway. We just gave one of these away last week. You get with this, with this gift pack, a bottle of uh, VF uh, branded Cabernet Sauvignon um, to enjoy. You get a Vega Fina torch lighter, a very good torch lighter, um, nice one. And you get the best part. I can't reach them here. Here they are. The wireless rechargeable earbuds with a nice little case. You can put them in. Um, all you have to do, I mentioned the Vega Fina 1998. Name me a Vega Fina cigar besides the Vega Fina 1998 and hashtag it with Vega Fina 1998 to win. Very easy button to win. I mean, no other cigar media is, is as generous and easy to win contests as I am. Oh, I'm going to make a major announcement here. Major announcement. There will be another drawing for the ultimate giveaway coming up, and, and I'll announce the date. There'll be an, an, an ultimate giveaway with the same prizes. So stay tuned. And everyone who entered already is eligible to win again. That's breaking news. Okay. You ready for, uh, you there, Bear? Yeah, I'm just doing some math. Okay. Um, why don't we at this point, um, unless we there's something we want to say beforehand. Um, we have a couple of how many electoral how many, how many electoral votes is Nevada? Um, is it six? No, it's got to be more than six. Um, it's not um, even on the board yet. Nevada. Why is Nevada not even showing up with the number? It says six. It says six. six. Which, yep. Okay, so I'm trying yep. to do some math here. Yeah, okay. So, as Bear is doing that, okay, um, we're we're gonna do a couple. We'll do a, we'll get into a one. Let's go in a minute. We have a couple of them tonight. Um, but what I'll do is um, I'll also mention a couple of other sponsors um, that we have. So I want to mention Illusioni Cigars. Deep in flavor, deep in your mind. We are not industry standard. Illusioni Cigars. And um, what am I doing? Okay. So I'll also mention our One Must Go segment um, tonight, uh, always sponsored by United Cigars. United We Smoke, But One Must Go. Brought to you by United Cigars, featuring La Giana Havana. Distributors of Jose Dominguez, Bandolero, Garofalo, and the highly acclaimed Atabay and Byron line. Buy United, Smoke United, Live United. Based in New Hampshire, by the way. Um, so uh, I guess they were united behind Biden tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd consider that one an upset. Small upset, but an upset. Okay, so let's. we have a couple of these we're going to do. Um, the first one is kind of one related to the theme tonight, okay? And um, it's related around the whole national election thing. And I have selected – before I do that, do you have any update on, on numbers you were just doing or you want to – So, man, this is so fucking close. So, okay. So, okay, so if – okay, so if Biden – okay, so if Biden takes the states that he's leading in, Minnesota, Iowa – Arizona, right? He's uh -huh. at 209. That puts him at 220 for Arizona, 226 with Iowa, 236 with Minnesota. If 
he takes Maine, that's 240. If he takes Nevada, that's 246. If he takes Hawaii as projected, even though Hawaii's not on the board yet, that's 249. That's not 270. It, I'm telling you, this is this Alaska's is, Alaska's not going to Alaska's probably going to go Trump. Right. It's this. The, I could say and Trump's thing. leading in all these other battleground states. Trump is Trump is winning in Wisconsin. Um, real uh, not handily, but got a pretty good lead. He's got a really good lead in Michigan. He's got a really good lead now in Pennsylvania with only still with only 46 percent right. percent reporting. North Carolina seems to be his. Seems to be the president. I, I I'm shocked. I thought it was going blue. I got to be honest with you. It it's I Texas think Texas is Texas is is leaning to Trump too. Fifty one percent. Still El Paso County yet to be counted. There's a million votes there, which seals the seal gets the gap even closer if it goes to Biden. But yeah, but they're not all mil, not all million are going for Biden. No, I mean, no. It, we, there's a lot to so. go in Texas. I mean, Texas. I I think he's going to hold Texas, but we'll see. We've seen things happen. We've seen so good analysis as we kind of dive deeper into this election night right now. We're getting into the, the we're getting into the witching hour right now in the NFL, like the NFL. It's at three o'clock witching hour. This is the witching hour right now. I think this the eleven. I think the next hour is going to be very critical. We're going to see. Um, Trump is not out of this yet, but uh, because there's a lot of states still have to tip his favor. But will he get the royal flush? Is my question. Maybe he'll get. Maybe a flush will be enough to win it. I don't know. He needs the Royal Flush to clinch it, though. And he and he may have a good hand of cards right now. Okay. One must go, Bear. Uh, I picked three things um, in, uh, related to the political season. All right. And one of these things has to go. All right. The first one is the Iowa caucus being the first primary in caucus. Okay. The second one is Polls closing at different times around the country, like we're seeing now. Should they all close at the same time? And the third thing is keeping election day on a Tuesday. One must go, Bear. Which one? Um, so I, this is this is really hard because you're talking about there's only one choice in here that fights like there's two traditional there's two historically traditional things that you're fighting against one logical right thing right like scientific like right. how how do you orchestrate considering that considering the country expands to not just four time zones we're not talking about pacific mountain central and eastern time zone. yeah that's 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 the majority of the country alaska enters a fifth time zone and Hawaii is a They're six. one hour, and Hawaii is a six, and that's actually isn't Hawaii two hours behind? Yeah, Alaska. Hawaii, oh, Alaska's four hours. Hawaii's five hours from Eastern. Hawaii is only five hours from Eastern. I thought it was six. No, it's it's five. It's five hours. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. If someone correct but I'm pretty, I thought it was five. So you're talking about five different time zones. Like, if you if you shut if you shut off the polls at let's say nine o'clock in eastern time that means um eight o'clock for central seven o'clock for mountain six o'clock for uh for pacific five o'clock for alaska four o'clock for hawaii yeah that's not terribly unreasonable but that's really unfair to the working class of hawaii and alaska okay and you could are and you could argue the pacific well, time zone right you could argue that with early voting it shouldn't make a difference but yes yeah. Early voting definitely uh, definitely uh, right. played a factor in, right. in this election, I think. Um, um, I, I think Hawaii, is, I think Iowa still has to be the first one. I, I'm just I'm going to hold her tradition. Right. I'm going to hold your tradition on that. Okay. I got to keep that one. You keep out. You keep an Iowa as the first primary caucus. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The the elections shutting at the same time. I got to kick that one to the curb. Okay. That one. That one must go. Right. Yeah. 
I, I think I, you got to keep you got to keep election day on a Tuesday. It's just tradition. You got to keep Iowa. It's tradition. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll, I think I'll go with that. Okay, that's a good one. The, the, the polls closing at different times around the country. Because it's the only one that's different. Like you're you're yeah. asking you're talking. That's science and that's logic. Right. Okay. Uh, that 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 just presents a lot of difficulties for for the for the Western time zones. Right. But like you said, early voting should should take care of that, right? Yeah. You would think. Uh, yeah, you would think that. Um. So here's my thing on that. I'll kind of go in reverse order. I think you got to keep election day on Tuesday. Most countries I know do it on the weekend. Um, I don't think a weekend vote works in this country as well. Um, to, you know, you, you got church services, you got you got the Sabbath, you got uh, you know, Saturdays, you got the Jewish community, you know, um, with, with, with synagogue, you know, temple, those types of things. So I think it's tough to move it, right? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having it close out on a Tuesday anymore. Um, so I, I'm going to say that stays. Um, the polls closing at different times around the country. I don't have a problem with that either. They could standardize it. It kind of makes it in, it kind of makes it interesting. It does give people a chance on the West to vote after work. If you know, it's not a day off for anyone. So they they can do that. Um, so Iowa goes, okay, but, but I have a caveat. Iowa goes and they rotate it with a bunch of states that I would say have under eight or under, uh, you know, a very small amount of delegates at stake. Um, and I think that other states deserve the opportunity to kind of get, like Iowa gets a, a, an economic boom every time, you know, for, for six months heading into there, right? I mean, they have all these candidates there. They're on the news. Like, what would be a harm in doing it in, um, you know, some other places like like Montana, like, um, you know, Vermont, um, you know, give some of these other states an opportunity to do it. But but put it in a pool and keep Iowa in the pool. I don't have a problem with it, but but keep it in a, in a, in a small enough. South Dakota, would, you know, is another one, maybe um, so that these states can kind of benefit from the same. Some, some of the same publicity. Uh, we always learn a lot about Iowa in, in the last, uh, you know, every, every couple of years. So I'm going to say Iowa gets kicked to the curb, but uh, you know, like, look, California shouldn't be the first primary either. You know what I mean? So New York, yeah. be, you don't want that to happen. So uh, it kind of creates, uh, it makes you work for the election. So I agree, given these smaller states in the end, it's, it, they're, they're not going to decide the, the nominee, but they'll set the tone. Yeah. No, uh, absolutely. Uh, yep. There are a lot of uh, a lot of splits on this thing right now. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, Sean Miles, Trump has the queen ten of spades right now. <laughs> uh, Jay says election day shouldn't be on Tuesday. Allen says uh, Iowa and New Hampshire need to stop being the first primaries. So yeah, there's just some dividing here on that as well. But we're split on that one tonight, Bear. Mm hmm So we have another one must go. This okay. is not election related. And you came up with this one. So I'll let you kind of lead with this. Yeah. So you know, twenty twenty has been twenty twenty has been a just a just a rough year, man. We've 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 already talked about COVID exhaustingly. We talk about it every week. It, it's it's hard not to talk about the reality that we live in. Um, and you know, we've also lost some. We've also lost some some icons uh, across the entertainment world, uh, sports world. You know, Bob Gibson, Gail Sayers, and you know, in the sports world, and then most recently in entertainment, we lost. Uh, an iconic actor in Sean Connery at 90 years old passed yep. over the weekend. Yep. Right. And so that that's, you know, this sparked a lot of discussion in, in, a, in a number of different contexts. Right. And of course, one of the yep. most prominent contexts is, is James Bond. Right. Right. You know, he was, a, he's the one who put James Bond on the map. Um, yep. And he became a character um, that, you know, James Bond is now a intricate part in, in culture because of, of the, of the tradition that he started. Right. 
And so it, it sparked this interesting discussion of like, okay, well, who, who is the best bond who are, you know, over the course of, over the course of history. So you have, you have, uh, you know, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan, Daniel Craig, Timothy Dalton. And there was one more, right? Uh, George Lazenby. This is how, yeah. So this is how significant he, is Lazenby that I couldn't even remember his name. He had one of the best movies, it, but, but yes, it, well, he was only did one movie. So Lazenby only did one. You can really – the Timothy Dalton James Bond films were terrible. Um, bad awful. movies, not bad actor. Bad movies. Yeah, he's a good actor. Bad movies. Right, right. And so I came up with the second one must go tonight, and I based it on the fact that who uh, who's the who's the Bond that you, you, you that must go? And right. I, so I picked three out of the um, – out of the – out of the uh, the six – and the reason I picked these three is one, I don't think anyone can argue my my uh, my criteria here. Okay, so Daniel Craig is not on this list because technically Daniel Craig's resume is not complete yet. He is he still has one more film to do. Right. And uh, then there's there's talk about the next Bond and you know that it might be a woman and yada yada yada. And that's please, that's another don't. discussion. Please, but please no. Call um, it something else. Call it something. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, call it something else. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a Daniel Craig fan. I like Daniel Craig a lot, and I, I, he certainly brought a lot more to the role of James Bond than I thought he would. To be honest, um, I don't think okay. I was really. Yeah, I agree I with you to some him. extent. I agree with you to some extent on that. I was against him from the start uh, uh, at the very beginning, but I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed what he's brought to that character. Um, but he's his resume is incomplete, so he's not on this list. As I mentioned, Timothy Dalton's movies were awful. And I even forgot George Lazenby's name. So why the fuck is he on the list? So that well, leaves... Honor, a great movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Great. So that leaves three. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. That leaves yeah. three bonds. Three bonds. For very complete resumes. Uh, that each brought something very unique to the character of James Bond. Now, Sean Connery, you can't argue. He put James Bond on the map. Absolutely. Roger Moore. Um really took the reins from uh, Connery and and carried on the tradition in a great way. It, 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 it became a, you know, it, it continued the tradition and it continued at, a, at an uptick, right? You can, you can say that it can, you know, the popularity kept going with Roger Moore uh, being that character. And then, and then lastly, I have Pierce Brosnan on here. So Pierce Brosnan brought in an interesting component into James Bond. And like, I've read a lot of the James Bond uh, books as well. Um, and I'm a big fan of Ian Fleming. I'm a big fan of the character. Um, and it, it, on its face, if you look at it from, from a literary perspective and how it translated over to film, my opinion is that the the one person out of all all six that really that best brought like the look the swagger the feel everything that just that best brought that character from page to film was Brosnan the look you know the the, the look necessar not necessarily films or anything like that but just just the look like the way he's the the way he the way he looked and the way he was described on page on paper and then the way he translated over to film. So, and they have very complete resumes. They have all three have a number of, of, of prominent roles as James Bond. And so I came up with those three that we have to decide one must go now. So Sean yeah. Connery puts him on the wrap on, puts, uh, puts James Bond on the map, Roger Moore, who can tear continue the legacy and, and, and continue upswing and Pierce Brosnan, who really brought the liter in my mind, brought the literary character to, to, to life. And uh, and and continued it, you know, continued the tradition that Roger Moore and Sean Connery uh, laid the foundation for. So, um, so with that said, that long exhausting explanation. Sorry, Coop. Yep. Uh, so one must go, and I I know one that's staying for you definitely. Yep. I know one staying for um, you definitely. So Sean Connery, Roger Moore, and Pierce Brosnan. One must go. And so Coop, one must go. Okay. You're asking me that. So yeah. you want me to, okay. Um, okay. So let's kind of start off with um, uh, Sean Connery. Okay. Um, he created the world uh, role of James Bond. He created the image of James Bond. Uh, there are some great movies 
that are a part of that series under um, Sean Connery. You go back to Dr. No from Russia with Love, Thunderball, um, Diamonds of Forever, uh, Live and Let Die. I mean, I mean, look, great actor, great for the role. Uh, so Sean Connery's there. Roger Moore, um, I think, was a very good um, – was was – I think the Roger Moore movies were the ones I connected more with um, because of my age, um, you know, and, and there were some great movies that he had. Um, he had, um, um, what was, I'm, I'm sorry, River Let Die was, was, was Roger Moore. So I, I, I knew I made a mistake with that. River Let Die was Roger Moore. Um, so River Let Die, Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, uh, View to a Kill. I mean, there were some great movies. I there were my there were some of my favorite James Bond movies. I connected with Roger Moore. Those were the ones I saw with him in the theater. Um, great actor. Um, Moonraker was a good film. Moonraker was a really good film. Four Your Eyes Only is is an amazing movie as well. That's the whole ski the whole ski scene in there. I think that's. I think Four Your Eyes Only is really underrated. But yeah, it, I think it's. It, it was, I, I think it's actually. I think I could argue. I, I think you could argue is the most underrated. Critics panned it, I remember, and I'm like, this is a great movie. Uh, but you remember they they uh that was when they brought back um Octopussy comes out, and uh, you know, that was another good movie. Um, I thought so. Um, you know, really, really I thought that was a really good movie too. Uh, but you're right, I think Four Years Only was the um was the most underrated of all of them. Um and then you have Pierce Brosnan. Um I agree with everything you said about Pierce Brosnan. I think there was some underrated Pierce Brosnan movies. Some of those movies were very underrated with him. Um, but he was Remington Steele. He wasn't James Bond. I grew up with him as Remington Steele. I, I knew him as Remington Steele. That was his show. He was synonymous with the Remington Steele character. Um, uh, he was originally, I know, supposed to take over after more. And he couldn't get out of Remington Steel, right? So that's why Timothy Dalton got it for a few movies, till till Brosnan was available. Um, I think Pierce Brosnan did a very good job at carrying the torch that Roger Moore and Sean Connery set. I, I really do, and I think you know, I think Daniel Craig's done a, a admirable job as well. But when I compare Pierce Brosnan to the body of work of Roger Moore and Sean Connery, it, it just I can't. Um, it's, and it, 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 it's a tough one. Um, but Pierce is getting booted in this case. He's Remington okay. Steele. He's not James Bond. Okay. Yep. So I think um, I, I, we definitely agree on Sean Connery. Uh, Sean Connery. If anyone again, boots put, Sean Connery, even I wouldn't boot Sean Connery. I mean, you, you know what he did, yeah. I think Sean Connery... Um, I think he is James Bond. Yeah. You know, um, and what he brought to that role, how he brought that role to life and put him on the big screen um, is historical. Yep. You know, and, and in fact, in my mind, he's the best James everyone's, Bond. Everyone's measured against Sean Connery. Uh, you, you know, there's no doubt about yeah, it. I, Everyone, I, that's who he's I, measured I think against. You have to. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Coop. Favorite James Bond film all time. Doesn't matter who the actor is. Oh, what do you, th what do you think is the Mo best Moonraker. James Moonraker. Think Moonraker is? Okay, Moonraker. See, it's Goldfinger for me. Um, I I wouldn't argue that. That's like that's a very good one as well. Um, I, I do. I mean, you could also I for um, what do you call it? The um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. You could argue, you know, it wasn't the right James Bond, but great movie as well. Um, and uh, from Russia with Love is another underrated one. Mm hmm. Justin Andrews says, don't you dare mention Daniel Craig. Hey, rewind, Justin, because no. <laughs> Daniel Craig's not in this discussion. No, Daniel um, Craig's not there. <laughs> um, incomplete body of work, man. His resume is not done. Um, so my first Bond film was Goldeneye. That that was... See, now I, that's I actually, interest, interesting. Interesting. It was Goldeneye, yeah. It was Goldeneye for me. That was the first James Bond film I ever saw. I actually read the books before I even saw a James Bond film. I got into the books really young when I was really young. And that's why I said that he kind of really brought the character to life for me because yeah. he looked exactly the way that Ian Fleming described what James Bond should look like. And then I saw Goldfinger 
and I was like, oh, damn. Like, this is awesome. Then I saw all of Sean, uh, Sean Connery's work. And I came to Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, uh, Lazenby, which I couldn't even remember his name a moment ago, late, um, later. And so I, th- it's, I'm going to go ahead and say it's unfair. It really is unfair because of the order in which I came to came to Roger Moore, right? right? But you're not booting Sean Connery. No. Pierce Brosnan was that. I don't have that reference point of Remington Steel like you do. Perhaps if we were in the same generation, I might yeah. feel the same way. Yeah. But um, for me, it's Roger Moore that gets kicked to the curb. Wow. It's got to go. Wow. Now, I think we can all agree on – we can agree on two things, right? The bar was set by Connery, right? Everything yeah. gets measured up against right. Connery. Connery's right. staying no matter what. Right. Two, um, Lazenby should never have been a James Bond. <laughs> he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad, but he. But... It wasn't. It wasn't a bad film. It's just like it. Like one having having that having that one film played by one different person is. It's it was, so it integral stupid. to, and the problem is that's the most one of the most important films in the series because that's when he gets married and, and the wife dies, which is you know something that was carried over into a lot of the other films. So I, I understand what you're saying about that. And um, that's a great point, Justin. Justin said that Roger Moore means nothing to anyone under 40. That's a great point. Um, it's a fair um, comment. It's a fair comment. I mean, but it's one, and that's why I'm not arguing with you on that too much. I, I totally agree with that. And I think it's because I came to Roger Moore late. And I think as as I've watched more, I've as I've watched more, more, <laughs> yeah. um, not to be too punny, but as, as I've watched those those films more, I've appreciated them a lot more. And I've come to like him a lot more. But to me, he's still he's still um, he's still third on the list. And in my mind, I still th- I, I enjoy from an entertainment perspective too, like from an entertainment point of view, I do like Daniel Craig's films more. Like I think Skyfall uh, is one of the best made films of the entire series. Like overall, like like aesthetically, soundtrack, um, direction, you know, cinematography, script, action scenes um the the whole dynamic between javier bardem's character judy uh dame judy judy dench's character of m the mother figure that he because that she becomes to him like that whole that whole dynamic makes for by far in my mind the most the best made film in the entire series um, and it's also if you the mo- it did very well that film for a James Bond film, even if you take right. adjusted adjust it was the highest grossing of all of them, but adjust it it did very very well when you adjust it right. in terms of the series it was one of the most successful ones at the box office. Right. So like, yeah, I know Justin's like Justin Andrews is dying inside right now because I'm talking about Daniel Craig, but I'm talking about it from a film perspective, just that just that film, right? But. Like if you if you sit if you sit me in front of a television and I have a choice between watching like Goldfinger, Goldeneye, and Skyfall, I probably watch it in that order. Yeah. So it's still Sean Connery to me. It's still Pierce Brosnan, and then again Roger Moore gets left out. You know, like but Raker was a great film. Um, I, I I think Moon I think um, for your eyes only is still I think is like the most underrated Bond oh, film it's, ever. It's such an I think it's the most I, th- I think it's the most underrated Bond film ever, and that's a Roger Moore film. So yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I stand by what I said. I think, and and but I but in all fairness, I think it's because I came to more later. Yeah. Um, and I think that I might, you know, and at that point, if. I, I, I think I might agree with you, Coop. If I if I was in your generation, I don't think that's un, I don't think that's an it, it, a lot of it is generational. And but look what Sean Connery did. He he's transcended generations. Yep. Like Justin, if you're still in the chat, if you're not still mad at me, you can answer this question. I mean, is 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 Sean Connery your guy? Is Sean Connery is Sean Connery everybody's guy? Like everyone who's participating in the chat right now, 
is Sean Connery number one and everyone else is like one A, one B, one, you know, however you however you rank them after that. That's what I that's what I'd like to know. Like, does anyone think that Sean Connery is not number one? And it's kind of hard go, to say. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. It. I'll say. But I'll say Roger Moore. Really, you put Roger Moore above Sean Connery. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but but it's like splitting hairs. I think Roger Moore's body work was that okay. good. It was that. Yeah, his body work was that good. Um, it, it was that good. Oh, work. Um, you How know, is Florida still not gotten called. Ninety-eight percent of the votes yeah. in, dude. What the fuck? No, what the I fuck know. are they doing in the Sunshine State? Yeah. Call that uh, state, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. To to actually wrap up this conversation, um, I want to just throw out two candidates for the next James Bond that I think would be perfect. Um, and I, I would go either one of these guys. Uh, the first one is I would look at Michael B. Jordan uh, from Creed. I think he could pull it off perfectly. Uh, he'd Can be he do Black an English James accent? Bond. What? Can he do an English accent? Good question. Good question. Um, and the other guy, I don't know if he could do an English accent either, is uh, Damian Lewis, who's from Homeland. I think and billion and and billion. Okay. I, I, those would be the two guys I would look at uh, for the next James Bond. What about Michael Fassbender? I've heard his name thrown around. I'm not as familiar with his body of work, but I've heard that. Oh, body, he's, a heard, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah, oh, I've heard the name. Brilliant. I've heard I've heard the name thrown around. Um, I'll say it. I don't think they should go woman, but I've heard Michael Fassbender's name thrown out there several times. He's got the look. There's no question. He's got the look. I'm just not as familiar with his body of work, but but mate, he look. You look at him, James Bond. You think James Bond right away? Yeah, I I tell you, you know, you you want to know some interesting people. Some you want to talk about some interesting names that were thrown around this last time when Daniel Craig got nice. So Daniel Craig came out of obscurity, right, to become James Bond. Yeah, yeah. You know who? You know who was? You know who was in the running? One name's going to absolutely shock you, and it might even detest you. This won't. This this it's, first one won't. But Clive Owen was one. Okay. And I just thought he. I just thought he just wasn't polished enough. I don't think he is either. Yeah. But you know whose name was thrown around initially? No. This is going to blow your mind, and it might even disgust you. Matthew McConaughey. God, that would be awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Right. God, that would be. That would. Be I, I I I'm a McConaughey fan. I, I I really dig his films. I dig him as an actor. Um, I really uh, there time to kill uh, Lincoln lawyer yeah. where he played a lawyer in both films uh, are two of two of like Lincoln lawyer is one of my favorite films yeah. like just in general like, like really he does a, he's just a really great actor I really enjoy him uh, you name him James Bond and I'm just like throwing up in my mouth like that's just that's just that would that, that would have been ridiculous like I could not even believe his name was in the running yeah. that was just so stupid Idris Elba, uh, Jay Davis says that would be a good one. That's a very good one as well. Ooh, Idris Elba. That's a really I think he's good one. too rugged though, man. Yeah. I think he's not polished enough. Yeah. But by the oh, way, that's Scott. The thing. Like he's got... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I think he's just, I think it, I, I, Idris Elba is a brilliant actor. I just think yeah. he's not polished enough. He's a little too rough. Like like the you you have there's nothing wrong like like I would like, still go uh, Michael B. Jordan over him, but Yeah, like but I mean, if you look at these, if you look at the actors that have played him over, to, like, you know, Daniel Craig has looked pretty, pretty rugged in some of the films and some scenes, right? Depending on what, you know, during the, the point of the film that he's in. Um, Pierce Brosnan had that, you know, the, the one that he was in, uh, uh, The World is Not Enough, or The World is Not Enough, I guess. Yeah. Um, and where he was captured by the Koreans and like he was a prisoner of war and he that, that was probably the most rugged he's ever looked. And you know, that that lasted all of but five minutes when he escapes from you know from prison and then yeah. you know polishes himself up in a Hong Kong hotel and then he's James Bond again. But um the uh <laughs> um it's a there's a certain look and I like I, I think Michael B. Jordan is is polished enough. Um I think uh, Michael Fassbender is definitely polished enough. I'd have to look at his body work, but uh, I agree that he's got the look to pull it off. He, he's yeah. Damian Lewis, I think uh, he's a little rugged, but I think he's got he can he can he can definitely polish I, up. I think he can be polished um, up. Who's, yeah. who's the other one you mentioned? Um. Oh no, it was Michael B. Jordan and uh, my, Damian I Lewis. Those were your two. Those are my two. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then I mentioned Idris Elba when that one's thrown out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I've heard Adrian, Adrian Turner as well. He's got certainly the voice Who? for it. Adrian Turner. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He's young. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, I, we're about we're about ready to boot Alan Rubin from the fucking chat. Really? Like Bond is over. He's over. Bond says well, Bond is over. Get the fuck oh, out of here. Oh, he's got to do you, yeah, Alan. Get the fuck out of here. Alan, yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah, watch Seinfeld. Then. <laughs> go. No soup for you, Alan. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, all right. There's, there's the sign. There's the Seinfeld reference for you, Alan. Uh, no soup for no soup for you. Get the fuck out of here with your Bond yeah. hate. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah. So Bond is not overrated. Oh God. Go away. <laughs> all right. Back to the back to the board here. <laughs> Justin, if I hear Daniel Craig one more time, I swear. <laughs> See, Alan, that's how that's how you get that's how you that's how you stir controversy, man. You make me laugh. Yeah, no. Justin, Alan, Justin Andrews, just, Justin Andrews got me got me got me in stitches here. No, man. we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> we, we didn't say we boo people for James Bond. <laughs> oh, that's the only. Thing. We said we boo. Oh, I might. I, by the <laughs> way, I, I want to really, I want to really give it up to our audience tonight. Um, thank you guys very much. You guys have been awesome tonight. Um, we really appreciate it. Because I started the show, yeah. I was worried about doing the show. We couldn't ask for better. We got the best. We got the best audience uh, across all of our shows here um, that we do, and and we, I, I don't take that for granted. Um, we have to earn that every time. And and thank you guys. Um, you guys, you guys rock. This is this has been a, a fun night. This is how I wanted this night to go, and I do appreciate it. So uh, so great job by our audience there. Um, according to the Associated Press, which is what we're going on, uh, we are still showing that I noticed some other things out there. They're still showing 209, 118 here. Um, Nevada is starting to uh, put precincts in right now. Uh, so they're starting. Yeah, to Nevada is finally on the board, leading, leading Donald Trump, heavily leading Donald Trump. One percent report Vegas. Them. But it's like some it's like some place in the eastern desert that reported. So <laughs> it hasn't been yeah. Reno or Vegas yet. So keep that in mind. Uh, I don't expect that to stay the way it is um, unless uh, what is that place in the desert called um, the te- uh, the way they, I don't know what is it? maybe some people doing nuclear testing that went out and voted somewhere. <laughs> uh so um and then just so La- up- does, is Las Vegas blue is Las Vegas really blue Las Vegas would be blue yeah. Las Vegas really, with all that com- with all that commerce and everything really? uh you, cause you get into the city there it's a different it's different like th- Las Vegas is a big city outside the strip so yeah okay. yeah Wait, and you have sure. you have a Hispanic population there as well yeah um so yeah Las Vegas Fox is just there. Fox just called uh, Ohio for Trump by the way wow That's Fox though wow we're going we're going by AP but I mean uh, but, but I mean, Fox that's, is, that's not Fox too is much pretty, of Fox is conservative with their calling though I'm not saying that other Are they called was- Florida yet because 98% of the fucking vote in Florida. How are you not calling it yet? Like, it's just Florida's uh, irritating me right now. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, well, or AP know. is irritating me, I guess. AP is irritating me. 98% of the vote in and they're yeah. still not calling it for Trump. I think the next, the next 45 minutes are going to be very big right now as we kind of go through this, this uh, election night, uh, 2020 thing right now. And, um, like I said, I think there's a pass for Biden to win this, but, some people might have thought that Donald Trump at this point might have lost the election. And there's that is not the case. There's a lot of states leaning for him right now. Yeah. Uh, if t- looks like looks like my home county, my home county of Tarrant County here uh, where I live in Euless, looks like they're uh, they voted red. Interesting. It was a very, yeah. yeah I see that. I, I, I'm looking at that, too. Very interesting there. Uh, very interesting there. Uh, but El Paso, I see a little bit of blue now in the in, in in the city there. So I'm starting to see some of the blue come in there. Um, but we, I see Austin and Houston have gone blue. Uh, Corpus Christi, mm-hmm. red. That surprised me a bit. I I wouldn't have expected that. No. I mean, I would see. I see Laredo. I see Brownsville. That I could see very blue. Yeah. By the way, how how is how is Joe Jorgensen doing? Is she making any impact? 
Uh, Joe Jorgensen has gotten 1.2% of the vote of the Libertarian Party. Uh, well, nice. out of the, out of the 68,000 votes that she got in the state of Florida, mm-hmm. 69,000, excuse me, in the state of Florida, I know one person who voted in the state of Florida for Joe Jorgensen, and he yeah. made it public today. And that's uh, our good friend Nick Jimenez of Cigar Snob. He voted for Joe Jorgensen, so he is one of the 69,215 yeah. people that voted for Joe Jorgensen in the state of Florida. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I don't put when I vote, and I don't put who I vote out there, um, but I do vote as well. as I've been asked that, but, you know, um, I do vote. I don't feel a need. I just, it's a personal thing. I think it should be part of I've seen controversy about the I voted stick. If someone wants to put that out there, that's fine. And if, if someone doesn't want to put that out there, it's fine. Um, I don't have a problem with it either, but it's a personal thing. So it's, it should be a choice. Um, so I, I agree with you on, on that. You know, I agree on that. I should say, um, you know, Michigan, yeah, I've, I voted, I voted. So yeah, I voted too. I, and I say, I vote, I voted. Um, I'll say this part. I vote absentee most of the time. So because of my, my schedule, it's, I've, I've gotten used to doing that. So uh, that it, it is what it is. I'll tell you what's really an, uh, I, I think that there's a pass for Trump to win Michigan right now. There's a substantial yeah, 50, lead. 50, 50%. I'm not ready to say Wisconsin. I'm not ready to say Wisconsin, but I'm, I'm telling you. And uh, Pennsylvania is, is, there's a pass, but I don't think that's a done deal. I, I, I we have to really? see. It's yeah. pretty far. It's pretty far apart. Coop. It, it's very interesting. I, I, you can make the argument, the middle America argument in Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, Harrisburg area. Yeah. Um, um, I'm looking at the, the places, uh, Bucks County, which is, well, I'm sorry, Northampton County, excuse me, Northampton County, which is where Allentown is, uh, very, it's going red right now. That's surprising me a bit. Um, you got Allentown, Bethlehem and, uh, Easton out there. Um, so Maine, Arizona, and Mich- and Minnesota uh, look to be blue. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, twenty five percent of twenty five percent of precincts need to come in for Arizona, and I don't know if those twenty five percent are going to be Trump because the only state that was an upset that I see of everything called has been New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Maybe North Carolina, but that hasn't been called yet, or Michigan. Those haven't been called yet. But um, but but New Hampshire was a surprise. Did New Hampshire go? What did New Hampshire go in 2016? Do you remember? Oh, in Trump. They went they Trump, went right? Yeah, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll tell you in two seconds. I'll tell yeah, you in two I'm, seconds. I guess that one, I mean, and, and I'm saying, you're, saying oh, you're, you're harping on four votes. Four votes could make a difference this time. No, it went no. New Hampshire went blue last time in 2016. Okay, so maybe I'm not. I, maybe I thought that was a red state for sure. Okay, I mean it's it's overwhelmingly for Biden though. Um, and Iowa, Iowa, so, uh, Trump's taking the lead in Iowa right now. Yeah, this he royal might take this, those six. this royal flush is start. I mean, there's a. It's very interesting. I've never seen it like this at 11:52 Eastern, 10:52 Central. Where there's a substantial lead of called states, but a real possibility Trump can reel this in. It, it's not it's not out of the question. There there are things is you know I don't know what and folks are watching the networks. I'm sure we're not watching the networks, and I'm curious to see what some of the spins are on some of the networks. But but yeah, we're uh, we're really uh, why is Nevada saying no results again? They changed their mind. <laughs> they changed their mind. What happened? Did they? What happened to that one county in Nevada that was reporting? Uh, so something screwed up with the AP right now. Mis- mis- miscalculation. I'm curious. Yeah, I wonder what the projection. I wonder what the projection is right now. Um. No, like I said, like okay, so I so Iowa Iowa's gotten flipped in the last uh, thirty minutes. Okay. So there's there's six out. So again, so we're at two oh nine for Biden, right? So if two so if 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 everything holds still right now. So Biden takes Arizona with eleven. Jay said that someone called it, but it's still showing it's still showing uncalled right now. 
on AP. But so he takes it, he takes Arizona. That's 220. That's 220 electoral votes. Right. If he takes Minnesota, which he's looking to do, that's another 10. That's 230. If he takes Nevada, that's two. That's 236. If he takes Hawaii as projected, that's 240. That's still not 270. If he loses Iowa, which it looks wow. like he's going to. He could. That, I, that's, if the things hold right now. If Trump holds all these states, he can get reelected. But I don't know if that's going to yeah, happen. So Trump Trump won last in 2016 with 306 electoral votes to 232. Yeah. The difference that we're seeing right now, the dig the difference be that we're seeing right now, is that um, Arizona went red last election. Yeah. That's the only difference. But that's still only if you're looking at. If you're looking at, if you're, but if that's the only thing that swings, that's 242 electoral votes to, yeah. to, to uh, 294 for Trump. Yeah. So Justin's saying that Texas was called, but the AP hasn't called it yet for Trump. CNN called it. Uh, yeah. CNN has it called, it looks like. Wow. CNN called it. Oh, wait. Did they? Hold on. Time out. This thing is, this is, this is, this is, I'll tell you. No, something. Trump. Uh, no, they haven't called, they haven't called Texas yet. Someone CNN called hasn't it. called Texas. Yeah. Fox, uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Who called it, Justin? Yeah. Who called it, Justin? Um, Jay saying ABC has it 187, 140. This is, this is turning out to be a, a very close race right now. Because. There is like, a, like Trump's getting that Trump has that hand of cards. I, I keep going back to the Royal Flush scenario and uh, Fox called Texas pulling the J. OK, so that's a big that's a big win. I mean, Donald Trump, that, he had to work for that one. No question about that. In, in this 2020 national election, um, I have not heard. Has Trump been tweeting at all? Does anyone know if Trump's tweeting? Uh, well, that's Trump. Trump's always tweeting. So Trump is Trump tweet. Uh, according to Reagan, from uh, Trump is now at minus six hundred to win. An hour ago, he was the underdog. There's a pa- there's a pass that Donald Trump could get reelected as the president of the United States right now. Um, it doesn't. I'm looking at the tweets right now from him. Uh, I he is he has been relatively quiet tonight. Uh, the last thing is here. We were working good all over the country. Thank you was his last thing. Uh, yeah, that was so, five so, hours ago. So Trump, Trump is being smart right now. I'm, I'm sure they told him to, to take his phone away or something. They took his phone away. <laughs> yeah. By the way, by the way, uh, you know, back to our bipartisanship. That that Sterling Super Lancero, I just put it down. What a I, I smoked that for about two. Hours. What a fantastic Lancero. What a great you know. And I'm you know me. I'm hard on Lanceros. I, I could put that as one of the best Vitolas in the line. That is a fantastic cigar. The Super Lancer. I'm glad Lancero. you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go you know, in the spirit now. I'm going to have a big old Crux Epicure Maduro right now. So um, it's unbelievable. What's, I mean, it, you know, I, we'll, we'll get into a lot of this right now as we go through this, uh, this campaign for sure. Um, I, had, I had one more. I'll just mention one more uh, election. It was the two. It was the two thousand. I think I mentioned nineteen ninety eight was my other favorite election. I think I talked about that one already, enough. So I just want to mention that was my third one. So I had nineteen seventy six, nineteen eighty, nineteen eighty eight, and you had nineteen ninety two, two thousand, and two thousand eight. I think that re- represents the generational thing that it happened on us. Um, you want to have a little fun with some of this with this next segment as we wait for some more things to come yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um. If you were looking for baseball talk tonight, you're getting it. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is a fun segment, and I think we can all have a little fun with this one. Um, and, uh, okay. So what I did is there was a – some there was someone uh, – I saw this someone put together a list of baseball players who had the most home runs during a presidency. Um, and it is – so – if, for example, you look at the tenure of Bill Clinton, which baseball player hit the most home runs while Bill Clinton was president, right? So that's how this goes. 
Um, okay. someone did, I'm going to start this off with Eisenhower and go forward. We could go back. There's some other ones we can go back on, right? I think these results you're, and you're going to try to guess who, who it is on each of these. I know the answers to this. I, I was shocked at some of these answers, but, um, let's, let's kind of go with that. Ready? Sure. I will. I have my guesses ready. So, okay. All right. Dwight D. Eisenhower, who hit the most home runs in the, the Eisenhower administration? in Major League Baseball? Uh, well, I didn't have that guessed. I, I started my guessing. Hold on, sorry. I started you... my guessing. Uh, I started with Kennedy. Okay, that's fine. I'll tell you who um, Eisenhower so... was if you want. Because I shot, I was, uh, let I me got take to... A, let, me take a, let me take a quick guess. So give me the years real quick, just to uh, make sure I got them. 52 to 60. 53 to 61, actually. It's actually 53 to 60. Yeah, it's uh, I'm sorry, it's 53 to 1960 because it's eight years, 53 to 1960 seasons. This one I got wrong when I guessed it. What'd you guess? Hank Aaron. Oh, no, it's not Hank Aaron. Yeah, I got this one wrong. Uh, 50. Fifty what to 60? Mickey uh, Mantle? No. Okay. Who is it? Eddie Matthews, 313. You know, that would have been my third guess. It was, you know, I would have went mantle next. I would have went mantle next too. So uh, you and I both. Uh, I thought Hank for sure had that one. All right. Let's kind of go because you know you prepped for some of these. John F. Kennedy, who hit the most home runs in the Kennedy administration? It's three years, right? 60 to 63. Yeah, because he, yeah. Harmon Killebrew. Bingo. Correct. 139. Great guess. That's a good one. It was okay. Harmon Killebrew. Good guess, man. Okay. okay. This one should be a little easier. Lyndon Baines Johnson. Well, if it's a little easier, then I guess I'm wrong because I had to kill a brew again. It's not Killebrew. Is it Hank Aaron? It is not Hank Aaron. It's not Roger. Is it Roger Maris? It is not Roger Maris, and that was my guess. Okay, then who was it? Norm Cash? Harmon Killebrew. a little later? Harmon Killebrew. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I'm so sorry. Guess... Willie Mays. Willie Mays. Willie Mays. Willie Mays. I'm reading the wrong. Willie, Willie Mays. Mays. Oh, nice. Okay, okay, okay. 181. Okay. Yep. So, all right, next one. Richard Milhouse Nixon. I got this one right. Reggie Jackson. No. Was that Norm Cash? Because he was, he was ripping off homers during that it time. It was not Norm Cash. You got it right, though, you said? I got this one right. Who was it? Hank Aaron, 218. Was Hank, Hank Aaron? Aaron had a big surge late in, his, in, that, in that late 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron had that surge. You know, Aaron hit war number 44 and hit 44 home runs three times, which was always an interesting stat. All right. Okay. Th this, is a, this one I got wrong. This one I got wrong. For um, Gerald Ford? Gerald Ford. Short yeah, I had. I had Reggie Jackson. So I had, I had Harmon Killebrew for Kennedy and LBJ, and I had Reggie Jackson for Nixon and Ford. Mm -hmm. So I had Reggie it's, Jackson twice. It's not Reggie Jackson. Okay. And I got this one wrong. Let's put it like that. Who is it? Michael Jack Schmidt, 87. During the Ford administration? Uh-huh. Wow. Ford had 76, 75, 76. He had big years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mike's going to play a prominent role here in a second. Um, okay. So Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Another Jim. Jim Rice. No. What? Is I thought it... I had that one dead to rights. Are you kidding me? It's not Jim Rice. Oh, who the fuck was it? Michael Jack Schmidt, 152. By the way, I went Reggie. I went Reggie with this one too. 
and I had, and my second guess was, was actually, you'll laugh at this, was um, Dave Kingman. Jim Rice has got to be number two, though. I don't you know. You know how many homers Jim Rice? Heard? Yeah. Oh, he was a bit. I mean, yeah. I mean, no doubt. Wow. Okay. So I had I had Michael Jack Schmidt during the Reagan administration. You got that, that one right. Big. You got that one right. Two hundred fifty nine home runs. Okay. Uh, so I've gotten two out of this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. God, I thought I had Jim Rice right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bush. George Bush. H.W. This was a tough. This was Mark, the toughest one I did. Mark McGuire. No, good guess. Is it Michael? Is it Mike Schmidt again? No, it's not Dale Mike Murphy. Schmidt. It's not Mike Dale Schmidt. Mur- Dale Murphy. I know Dale Murphy was hitting a ton of. This home one I had no. Cl- this one I virtually had no clue with. Uh, I actually was thinking possibly Jose Canseco. It wasn't him. This one was a shocker, but not a shocker when you look at his numbers. It wasn't Mike Mark McGuire? Okay, who was it? Fred McGriff, 137. Really? Yeah. He led the league. He led the league in 88. Mm-hmm. Was that enough to give him? I just didn't. No, he Fred McGriff just. Yeah, Fred McGriff was the answer here. Wow. Okay. All right. Bill. He's the most underrated. Fred McGriff's like the most underrated home run hitter of right, all time. Right, but yeah, you look at it. I can see it. it's 137. I can see it. Yeah, he had some big years. He had some big years during that that you know late ninety early two uh, nineteen ninety late eighties early nineteen nineties. All right, William Jefferson Clinton, Ken Griffey Jr. Correct, three hundred fifty one. Now, I I didn't I actually thought it might have been McGuire, right? But it mm-hmm. wasn't. You got he got hurt. He got hurt. Yep. He hit the seventy during the during the Clinton administration, yeah. but I thought Bonds. I thought Bonds, but I but Griffey didn't surprise me. Griffey didn't. I, I I see it. Yeah, you look at that. Those are the Mariner years with, with Ken Griffey Jr. Okay. All right. George W. Bush. Barry Bonds. No. And you I would. F- oh my God! Are you kidding? Not Barry Bonds. Oh God! Who the What's fuck the, is it? You, you, it's your favorite player. Well, Frank it's Thomas. Your least, it's your least favorite player. Barry Bonds is my least favorite player. Aroid. Three sixty four. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. 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 One A, one B. Yeah. And again, <laughs> look at the, look at where. Yeah, he had a big run during the, those. You remember that's when he. Uh, yeah. He had some big years in Texas there, too. All right. Barack Obama. Miguel Cabrera. Good guess, but no. Are you? Oh, my God. I thought I had these last few nailed. Are you kidding me? You'll get the next one, but yeah. Okay. But 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 this one, yeah, this one, think again, a guy who's up there in home runs. Jim, tell me. No. Tommy was pretty much done by that point of his career. Yeah, gosh. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's not Miguel Cabrera. Oh, God. Fuck. I don't know, man. Albert Pujols through 272. Uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. How f- and- Cabrera couldn't be too far behind. No, he couldn't have been either. I, I agree. I'd have to look with the numbers. I only have who was who was who was the leader. And I went and validated some of these on baseball reference, so the numbers are accurate. Oh yeah, no, I, I yeah. yeah, I don't doubt you, Cooper. Are you kidding yep. me? Yep. All right. And the last one, Donald Trump. Nelson Cruz. No. I got this one right. I know I'm close. Yeah, I got this but one right. Who is it? Mike Trout. It is Mike Trout. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was Nelson Cruz, Mike Trout for me. Yeah, yeah. So those are those are your home run leaders by president. Um, so Harmon, so Harmon Killebrew. I I got uh, I got that one right. Yeah, Willie Mays. Kennedy. John, yep. Willie Mays. Johnson. 
Hank Aaron for Nixon. Ford, Carter, Mike and Reagan Schmidt. with Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt. Bush, Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff. Griffey. Griffey for Clinton. A-Rod for Bush Jr., the W. Bush. Pool holes for Obama. And Mike Trout for Trump. I almost thought it was Bryce Harper in there, too. With that one. But no, no. Yeah, yeah, it would have been if the years were skewed a little different. Bryce um, Harper's probably fifth or sixth on that list, man. Yeah. Um, Just some of the other ones, just so you know. I'll just kind of read these off. Uh, Harry Truman was Ralph Kiner, 294. FDR was Jimmy Fox at 353. I was going to say Jimmy Fox, yeah. Yep. Uh, Babe Ruth was Herbert Hoover, Calvin Coolidge, and Warren Harding. Yeah. So not even know. yeah, not even a guess. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one would have gotten those two right. Would have never got the other ones right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, who is so who? How far do we go back? So uh, Harding was the last one. Hart. No, I got more. Gabby Cap- Kravitz was uh, Woodrow Wilson. Frank Schulte was okay. William Howard Taft. Teddy Roosevelt was Harry Davis. William McHenry was Buck Freeman, and Grover uh, Cleveland was Sam Thompson. I would have guessed Sam Thompson or home run Baker for that last, for the first one. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely got Ruth right with the three for sure. I mean, I would have guessed Ruth for all three of those. Um, I would have said Lou Gehrig for FDR, even though I know he got cut short, but Jimmy Fox yeah, Jimmy Fox at three fifty three is the second highest under a president, um, uh, behind our Alex Rodriguez, which is three sixty four. So back to the big board here. Uh, Biden is now it's uh, we're seeing different things out there, but Biden still got a lead right now. Hawaii went for Biden. Um, so four votes went up the three. Yeah, four votes went to Biden. So he's at 213. He's at 213. Uh, Trump is still pretty much leaning in all these other states right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Except for we, Nevada that apparently Reported a precinct, but decided not to report the precinct. Will Nevada be a controversial thing right now? Boy, Hawaii went fast at midnight, I guess. Alaska Alaska doesn't have their results reported yet. Um, in this big in this big uh, election night right now. Um, I just some have you. I haven't gone and looked at some of the other races. How's the Senate and the what's the Senate? How's that doing right now? Um, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So um, it's 45, 42. So, they're reporting Republican right now. Yeah. 45, 42, Texas. I told you was going to go corn in the entire center of the country. It looks like it. North Dakota uh, has no, dis- no election, but South Dakota, uh, Mike grounds is uh, do- dominated uh, Dan Allers um, in Nebraska. Ben Sassy dominated uh, Chris uh, Janicek. Kansas, Roger Marshall yeah. over Barbara Bowler, Oklahoma, uh, Jim and Offie over Abby Broyles and yeah. uh, just everybody. Texas is, was Texas was the closest election guy. Yeah. 53% for John, John Corn and 43% to MJ Hagar. Yeah. Uh, um, for, yeah. Wow. The whole center at center band of the state is like a red stripe right down the middle. Um, so Georgia is split right now in the Senate. So Georgia has both seats up right now. Yeah, but they have, uh, they're gonna have a runoff. David, yeah, they're gonna have a runoff. And one of That's them, crazy. Purdue looks like. Um, gonna, yeah, Martha McMuffin is losing in Arizona to Mark Kelly. So they're gonna flip a seat so, there. So you said that you said that uh, Cal Cunningham was the guy who uh, got Anthony Weiner, right? Yeah, this is a this is a. I mean. This is a big it's upset close. in North Carolina. Yeah, but this is a big upset. Cal Cunningham had a lead like you wouldn't believe until the scandal hit. And even after the scandal hit, it almost he had a little bump. But Cal Cunningham, this is and Cal Cunningham spent a fortune to take this seat away from Tom Tillis. But I tell you, the Senate races that I've been in, the North Carolina Senate races over the years have been the nasty. I mean, Kay Hagan and Elizabeth Dole had a cat bite. I remember that, you know, there was a, there was an absolute cat fight between those two. Um, 
And then Tillis took it from Kay Hagan. Um, Cal Cunningham, this is, I think a lot of, you looked at every poll beforehand, it was going, it was going Cal Cunningham. This is, Tillis may pull this one out, and it's a big, that's a big win for the Republicans there. Just like I think uh, Mark Kelly winning Arizona evens it out. Mark, Martha, Mc, Martha, Mc, Martha, Mc, Martha Mc, I call her Martha McMuffin, as an inside joke. Martha McSally's getting <laughs> trounced Sally. there right now. She's getting trounced right now. They haven't called it yet, but I don't see any pet. I think Mitch McConnell. Susan Collins looks to be yeah. keeping her lead uh, yeah. in Maine, keeping her seat in Maine. Mitch, I McConnell, like Susan Collins a lot. Mitch McConnell won big in Kentucky. You put Mitch oh, McConnell God, in any other Senate race, like if you put him in several Senate races in other states, he'd be getting killed. Yeah. Um, Can I, uh, Bill Haggerty. Tommy Tuberville. Destroyed, uh, Tommy Tuberville is going to, uh, it's been called in Alabama. The former Auburn coach. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it looks like, um, as far as the house goes, um, they're at 145, 128 right now, but there's a lot of places still to be called. So I think that's still too early. Um, there right now. I'm looking in North Carolina. Um, so a lot of the races have not been called yet. Dan Bishop in my territory has been reelected at, uh, He's been reelected, so he was he was my congressman, uh, so he keeps a seat for the GOP there. Uh, let's see, my 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 district in Texas is uh, is up for in the House. Yeah, everyone's up in the House. Yeah, another state for Biden. Let's see. Oh no, no, same thing. Uh, Two twenty three, one eighteen. So no, it's I'm sorry, he's no no no. Uh. Now Jay Davis is saying it's two twenty seven two ten Biden on Fox. Allen's saying the House was called already for the Democrats. So again, AP hasn't called it yet. We're going off AP, which is they're pretty conservative. So I'm not saying anyone's wrong. I'm just AP's been pretty conservative on what they're calling. So it looks it, like uh, in my district. Uh, so the incumbent congressman for my district was Kenny Marchant, um, several term congressman, really. Uh, past supporter of cigar, uh, premium cigar legislation, you know, uh -huh. for, co co sponsored some bills. Um, big fan of his. It was really sad to see him leave. Um, but this, uh, our seat was up for uh, District 24, is the district that I'm in here in Texas. And so it was up for, uh, for election. So there's um, Beth Van Dyne, the former mayor of Irving, uh, re representing the Republican Party. Um, holding a slim lead, but looks to probably take it with 73% of, uh, of precincts reporting. She's got a 49.1% uh, edge over the Democrat candidate, uh, Candace Valenzuela. So so either way, a woman representing my district. But it uh, looks like it's going to be the former mayor of Irving and Beth Van Dyne. Yeah, I'm looking at that one right now. I see that. Yep. It's a close race. Still a close race there. Wow. Wow. A lot happening. Now, um... I haven't. I'm just looking at the the governors right now, seeing if there's anything happening with the governor races. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not showing governors come up at all. So, I don't know if there's a lot of the governors aren't coming up here for whatever reason. So, we'll check. Pete that. Sessions won again. Um. He he uh, it represents the district that I work in. Yeah, where my office is located. Kay Granger uh, from Fort Worth is where I lived for a number of years. She won again. Yeah. Jay saying that Wisconsin has encountered the mail-in ballots. We're not going to know who wins this thing tonight. I I, I think we're really. Um, we're, this is going to go into tomorrow, but we'll keep going if you want to. Yeah, but I think we got plenty to still talk about. Nevada went off the grid again. Nevada is still off the grid. Arizona is getting a little closer, but not by much. 75% reporting now. Yeah, I, I don't Min see. 
Minnesota was called. Minnesota, Minnesota got called for Joe got called so that, for Joe Biden. So that's a that's a loss for Donald Trump there from his base. Yeah. Um because that was a state he won in, in 2016. Was it? Yeah, he won Minnesota. Matt ties in the chat. Matt, is that true? Yeah, Matt. I thought I thought he I thought the the in according to according according to okay. According to CNN, it looked like it went blue, but I'm going to check it out right now. Um, I'm going to double check this. Uh, no, you're correct. I was wrong. Donald Trump lost minutes, so he didn't get that. Eerie, this is going very close. I mean, if you look at 2016, um, this. It, so I'm looking at the map of 2016. Let me pull this up. The only difference, the only difference from the map that I'm looking at for 2016, the only difference right now is Arizona. That's the only difference in terms of who's leading. Um, and that's why I said, that's why I said, so 2016, Trump got 306 electoral votes. Yeah. Hillary had 232. So you throw Arizona in there, that's 244 electoral votes. Yeah. So Biden needs another state. Biden needs, he needs to, flip, to he, he needs, needs to, to win Nevada and he need, which isn't reporting apparently. Right, but Nevada he needs would to be... win Arizona and he needs to win another state. He needs to need he needs to win Wisconsin. Uh, or North and or North Carolina. Yeah. He needs that. This is uh, North Carolina gives him 15 more. Wisconsin has 25 more. That puts him at 257. He needs he needs something more than that. He needs Pennsylvania. He Pennsylvania Pen or North Carolina. Man, I go back, Joe Biden. Again, if you pick someone from like, I don't know, this is two two candidates in a row blew blew the VP pick. Pennsylvania, you should have picked someone from. I've been saying that. I don't know what these guys would think is in a, in a close election. Wow, this is unbelievable. This is um, I mean, this is we're we're I mean, we're past midnight here. Uh, and you know, and let me tell you, if, if Trump's behind in the popular vote, I think as well right now. So, oh, did that finally even out a little bit? Because that was yeah, it that was the like, early discussion point. Um, let's see what it is according to the uh, and Trump just got a win on something. We're gonna look at that in a second. Um, he has got. 58 million votes and Biden's got 59 million votes. Someone Trump just Trump, won. Trump just got Ohio. Trump got Ohio. Wow, a big win for Donald Trump in Ohio. 18 electoral votes, giving him to 136. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Iowa. Iowa just got called for Trump. 145. Yeah, it just changed on my map too. Donald Trump beginning to beginning to have a late out in the midnight hour now where Donald Trump is in the late part of the third quarter I'd say right now and we got people in here at at 12:22 on the east coast 11:22 central following this show um and 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 again I got to just our audience rocks I I can't say enough about our audience they just uh, thank you guys yeah uh, great. I, I, a lot of people trying to give us good feedback. I just want to mention Scott, Scott Cunius earlier. Um, I want to use his one must go idea uh, for the next show. So I'll tell you about that one. It. Uh, I don't want to give it away on the show, but if you look in Scott's comments, we could do it. So I'm going to tease that a bit, but I like Scott's suggestion for a one must go. How far back was that? I didn't a see lot, it. About, about when we were doing it. You want me to, I'll say it. We say it, if, but, but the problem is then we'll, it will, I just don't want to derail Derail what we're gonna do the segment. Okay. Yeah. Because it will definitely. Um, North Carolina is at ninety four percent. Um. Boy. What I I got I gotta be honest I didn't think Donald Trump had a chance in North Carolina. Um, or Tom Tillis. I am I am. Let me tell you I am. North Carolina is like the ultimate purple state right now. 
It really is. Um, I you know what's interesting? Like you said, there's only a couple of states that have like Arizona flipped. Arizona's flipping. It's unbelievable. Most of these others have not flipped. I mean, there was, some of these polls in Wisconsin and Michigan have been surprising. Yeah, I thought I thought Michigan would be a lot closer than it is. I thought Pennsylvania was going to be a lot closer too. There's a fifteen percent. There's a fifteen point thing yeah. for the president. Lead for the president. And and a lot of people, you know, we're talking Georgia flipping blue. A lot of people, Georgia. That's not going to happen. Florida still isn't called though. We've been saying Florida should be called since yeah. for the entire show, Coop. What the hell are they doing? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, unbelievable. What's not counted in Florida? What is it, not counted? Why are we? It's got to we... be. It's got to be Miami, Dade, Broward County, and maybe four percent of the precincts need to be counted. Is that really? But remember, four percent could represent a bigger push in the population in those precincts that maybe aren't reported. It could be heavily. Po- the, the the precincts have different. That's where I think that's that's the issue. I'm I'm surprised, but none no one is calling Florida yet. Unless if someone, Luciano, curious about the show, non-political. We are, we are, the, we welcome everyone, Luciano, uh, our friend. Uh, we welcome everybody. We're talking. This is we're just putting us. We're just talking about the returns coming in, um, and everyone. You know what's great? Everyone could go on Facebook tomorrow, and and it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. Um, so. Sean Miles is asking about his home state. So, yeah, 66 percent of the vote uh, now showing uh, in Idaho for the four electoral votes, which was called with one percent precinct. It, it was called. Well, it was called at one point with 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 Biden winning. And the only place that looks blue, 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 blue is Boise. Yeah, the it's only- 57 to 40 percent, 57 to 40. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. yep. Hawaii got called with like no districts getting reported too. That was the best part. Yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's still zero. <laughs> what the hell, Hawaii? <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, we're going blue. Ma- yeah. Maine still. Maine, Maine's still holding blue. Maine's gonna. Um, Maine. Maine and Arizona look to go blue. Uh, in 2016, Maine was split because you know Maine and New- and Nebraska split their electoral votes. Yeah. So Maine split their four. They went two and two. So if all four go to Biden and 11 from Arizona go to Biden, that's 236. That's 256. Yeah, it's 256. It's, he needs he needs another. St- so here's what I'm going to pull back up a map again. I have the I have an interactive map. And here's how it's looking with uh, this is kind of, you know, some of my colors may be off on how much it's leaning. But if Trump holds the lead in these states, and unless I have an error here, let me know. Arizona should definitely be blue. Um, this is how it's looking right now. It's a 50 point electoral win, not a landslide, but enough to, to enough to keep the presidency. Pennsylvania flips. Watch this. It's close. It goes down 10 points. And let's let's say Pennsylvania flips and North Carolina. Pennsylvania's not it's too much. It's a 15 point difference, man. It's not going to flip. Yeah, but if if Pennsylvania and North Carolina flip, it's over. It, it's 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 getting Donald Trump has to pass the win now, too. I think it's I think it's the president's to lose at this point, right? I, I, he's got to. Sh- I mean, he's got to hold what's, these what's leads the right. He's got to hold these leads right now. He has to hold the leads. The percentages are so high, though, Coop. I mean, like if you look uh, at this, I mean, the percentage. The, the diff- okay, so in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, sixty-four percent, forty. So forty yeah. percent of the precincts need to go. I mean, you have to like dominate the forty percent wow. remaining precincts to get even close. It's fifty-seven percent to forty-one, Coop. 
in Pennsylvania. North Carolina, who we thought was going to be too close to call, it's 94% of the vote in. It's 50 to 48. That's the closest one. Yeah. It, it, to, so, I mean, if Wisconsin... Te- they, Texas was apparently called in on another network. We're still going by AP, but Donald Trump is showing at 79% of precincts reporting at 52 to 46. The Joe Biden's not going to take Texas. Oh, I think, I think Texas is over. I, I, I do. Yeah. Um, like I said, the only state that's flipped tonight on the whole board has been Arizona. If I'm, unless I'm making a mistake, that's the only state that Biden flipped in. That's amazing. That's an amazing statistic. What, what you think will go. There's another county next to Harris County where Houston is that hasn't been called yet. That's really populous. I think it still goes red, though. I think that county goes red. El Paso still hasn't been called. Yeah. The adjacent county to El Paso County, uh, um, Pecos County. Pecos County hasn't been called. I think Pecos County is going to go red. Yeah. Yeah, Texas, I think, is done. Yeah, Jay is confirming Arizona is the only state that flipped in this. That is un, that's an unbelievable statistic we're seeing here, considering the turmoil of, the, you know, the contentiousness of this election. And Jay's got it at 237, 210 on Fox. For... Wow. Wow. We have a, we have a lot going on here. Hit another topic? Why not? Sure. Let's uh let's pull it up. Um I'm just trying to think. Oh, let's let's get into great things are happening here. We didn't get into that yet. Um so great it's you know as, as I said, this is a this is a positive show. Um and you want we want to mention uh tobacco you say sponsoring the great things are happening segment here. Um, where we pick a positive story, right? Um, mine wasn't a story this week, okay? Mine was a photo. Um, and I'm going to share the photo. I know you have a story, but I'm going to share the photo. Mm-hmm. And I found this on Jack Tarano's Facebook page. There you go. That's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be yeah. fighting and name calling on Facebook. Um, we should be. We, this is what we should be doing, guys. And this picture tells a thousand. There's a lot you can look at with this picture right now. Yeah, the Biden guy obviously wearing the mask. The Trump guy not. Um, they're each holding their flags. Um, um, it was interesting. They put a younger guy for Trump and an older guy for the Biden guy. But um, I, I just can't. That's that's it, man. That's what we look at. And, it's, and for folks who are listening. Uh, there's two people in a photo here, um, a younger guy with a Trump flag with no mask, shaking the hand of a Biden guy with a mask on who's a little older. And that's my great things are happening here. That's what we should be doing. And I'm embarrassed for some of the things I've seen on Facebook, not just, you know, obviously, we know of the one dust up the, the skip Jeff thing, but there's been all these. I mean, it's just it, this is what we should be doing t- tomorrow. Or when this is decided, it should have been happening the whole time. Chris. It should have been. Ha- this is what this is there what we should. this is what we used to do, right? So, a little story with this with the eighty-eight election. Um, we had a, I had a party at my house. I came back from college uh, for the election night. Uh, a bunch of my friends. We all came back into town for the eighty-eight election. Uh, we had a party at my parents' house, a, a viewing party for the results. Um, let's just say that. My friends and my mom were not on the same page with the candidate. Okay. Um, and my mom couldn't have been a more gracious host that night for us. She did it. Yeah. She, she served us at the party. She did everything at the party. Um, and there was a little needling going on with her and some of my friends. And you know what they all did afterwards? They all hugged my mom and my mom hugged them. That's, that was awesome. What we did. Uh, they were just, everyone was just great sports afterwards with that. Um, don't get me wrong. Everyone was against my mom, and I felt bad for her. But my mom, she could have been more gracious, and my friends were, were equally as gracious back. So, um, it was a good, it was a good time. That's what we should be doing. Okay. 
So, um, Alan, I think Ruben was saying that only 16% of Michigan's early votes have been counted. Could be. But he flips, he needs a lot more to flip than just Michigan right now. We, we kind of showed that. He needs, he needs a lot more to flip right now. Biden may need the royal flush right now. Biden may need a flush. Biden may need a flush. He's got to flip a state. He's got to flip something bigger than Arizona. I can tell you that. He's got to take. Well, he takes Arizona. He's got to take. He's got to take Pennsylvania or South Car or North Carolina. Pennsylvania will be the biggest upset if that happens. I don't think anyone had him pick pick the win Pennsylvania. Someone's saying uh, Biden expected to be too slow. Wait, I think he's going to concede. No way. No way, Clinton. Uh, Biden. Biden's going to get on saying we're going to fight fight till the end West result. It's too close. It's still too close. All right, Barry, you ready? Wait, Nevada. It's, Nevada's got some votes coming in right now for Trump. Couple of central count precincts reporting, so it's early. Yeah, just, yeah, I, just like east I, of Reno. Yeah. So, Bear, what do you got for your uh, great things that are happening here segment? So I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I found this story and I thought it was really cool. Um, so, in, in the spirit of in the spirit of COVID and everything, um, you know you know, the terms that we've, we've been using quite a bit over the last few months, you know, like unprecedented times and social distancing and things like this. And so I, I found this story is really cool. So, um, so San, Santa Claus has been named an essential worker and to boost his Christmas cheer, everyone is ringing a bell outside at, uh, at a certain time. So with uh, the Christmas season, a lot of people taking advantage of it early, right after Halloween. I saw a lot of Christmas trees going up and stuff because they just—it's 2020. Why not? Um, they, but uh, you know, with you know, a lot of us have kids. Some of my like, I have younger kids. Coop, your kids are older and everything. But a lot of us have young kids and everything. You know, there was a you know, but with COVID-19 being a reality for a lot of kids and understanding, even my son who's five understands that you know the life this isn't normal this isn't you know that he had he wears a mask when we go out you know he um and um there's a lot of you know concerns over the coronavirus and everything like that so a lot of there's obviously been a lot of concern from kids well will santa actually be um able to visit homes this year right with a good with point COVID 19 yeah so uh on i'm not a big fan of this tradition but there's a big this big thing called elf on a shelf right uh it's a you know basically um there a lot of during the holiday season there's a lot of parents that uh, will take pictures of an elf on a shelf this little elf figurine and in, in various fun positions some people get a little in the gutter with it and but mostly it's in jest and it's in good fun right you know just this this uh you know little jovial thing so like and so there it has its own facebook page elf on the shelf so santa actually santa claus actually posted on the elf on a shelf facebook page that it has come to my attention santa posted that children around the world are being told by their older siblings parents and other adults and even friends that christmas is not coming this year due to the pandemic and that is simply not true so not only has St. Nook been practicing social distancing like everyone else, he has been named an essential worker and a key worker as known as across the pond by Scottish uh, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. Even though many holiday festivities will be observed by people who are six feet apart, Santa has been given the all clear to carry out his Christmas Eve delivery duties as scheduled. So Santa will be prevented from delivering to present will not be prevented from delivering your presents on Christmas Eve, uh, Sturgeon declared in a speech reported on, on by the Scottish Sun. Okay, so Nicola Sturgeon is the first minister of Scotland. So, so Santa is a key worker, right? And he has gotten lots of magic powers that make him safe to do that. Santa will be delivering presents across the world. Now, you guys might be laughing or grinning at this, but I, I took, I took it as such too, man. This is this. Look, as I mentioned before, I have a five-year-old son. And he understands that the world is different than it was, and it's you know a few months ago. He understands that he. They, that we can't do things. We can't do the things that we were doing before. We can't go places that we were going before. And he, 
for a five-year-old kid, there's, that's really confusing, you know, and, and there's thousands millions of children his age a little bit older a little bit younger they're in the same boat and you know there's you know whatever your whatever your stance is on on santa claus it, it brings hope and joy to millions of children around the world and i found this story incredibly you know fun and joyful in a time that's as we've been talking about tonight this has been one of the most contentious elections in our lifetime it might actually go down in history as the most contentious election of all time. Um, COVID-19, race relations in this country, so, so much, so much negativity was surrounded by it, we're enveloped by it. And for this piece of, you know, fun news to come out, I found it just, I had no choice but to smile at it. It just was really cool. I thought that- That's a great story. This yeah. is bringing- yeah, it's bringing a lot of hope to children who, you know, were, weren't looking forward to Christmas for the first time in their young lifetimes. Can you imagine that group? Can you imagine yeah. as a child being told I, that Christmas wouldn't happen? That would be horrible. Uh, yeah. good, good job here. Good job here. Um, I, I look, you can't, you can't look. So I'm glad Santa's finding a way to get this through here is what I'll just say. Yeah. Is, yeah. This is very good, uh, and uh, he's practicing his social distancing now so he can deliver the presents on uh, Christmas Eve. That's, just, that's what he's doing here. Now, you know, my kids are older here, but, man, there was, there's nothing more fun than following the NORAD thing over the years. I mean, we always follow the NORAD. It's like, uh, you know, it's always a tradition in my house. Um, you know. Well, he'll be making his trip. Yep. You know, we used to call a phone number. On Christmas Eve to find out where Santa was, we had this 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 it was a, it was like twenty five cents a call, and you call and you find out like this before internet you call up and they'd say Santa is over such and such, and uh, you, you did that every year. Uh, they, we had something called nine seven six numbers in New York, and that's what you you did with that. That's how we used to get our sports scores too, like before you got the newspaper the next day. If you wanted to know who won a game, you called the nine seven six sports phone number. And there would be a recording with all the scores or you'd wait for it on the radio. Right. But the best thing is you get the live updates on the phone. And okay, it was like a quarter call, you know, and um, my parents were pretty good about letting me rack up some dollars every month to contribute to the phone bill. But that was, that was still pretty good. Okay. Can I interrupt on something? Not the, not sure. the Florida has been called. For Trump. Well, it's about fucking time. So we are. <laughs> so according, according to the associated press, which is what we've been kind of just consistently going off tonight. Um, it is 223 to 174. Um, I'm hearing there's a lot of, I'm hearing also, like Michigan and Pennsylvania are going to be interesting because there's a lot of uncounted ballots that are mailed in, apparently, on those two states. Um, and if they flip, um, it could change this very much for Biden. Um it has to. It, it that's what has to happen. Biden has to win Arizona as predicted. What we're seeing. Yeah. He's hold, he's holding steady right now, with seventy five percent reporting. He's holding steady, and he has to win. He has to win Michigan and Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Wisconsin. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Those and, three states are, are absolutely the key now to, to, for him. Assuming he gets, because again, I'm assuming Georgia, assuming Georgia and North Carolina go go for. Um, Trump. <laughs> North Carolina is pretty close, though. It's very close still. It's still very close, but it's, it's been holding at 94%, much like Florida was. So that was a lot. Like, that was what was pissing me off. Florida's, Florida was at, like, 90% re reported, like, for our entire show, Coop. And it was, yeah. like, dominant lead by yeah. Trump. Like, I didn't yeah. understand what the hell they were waiting for. Roy Cooper has been reelected governor of North Carolina. And uh, but they have not called the Senate race yet. They have not called the still Senate race, which means Phyllis is still pretty close in there right now. So definitely not um, anything there. How is the overall Senate looking right now? <coughs> 46, 43. So the Republicans could hold that. The Associate Press uh, has called 26 of the 35 seats up. So Biden's got to win eight of the nine remaining. 
to hold the, to get the Senate. I mean, sorry, the Democrats have to win eight of the nine remaining to get the majority in the Senate. They need seven to get a, a split. The House um, is at 153, 139, but according to the Associated Press, um, 143 sites, uh, seats are still up for election. I, I, I still think that's going to flip to the Democrats, though. Um, Quentin's saying that Biden is coming to a stage somewhere. He's probably yeah, just he's, he's probably just he, coming on. To, he's not going to concede. Not with the not with the not with the electoral lead right now. What, what no, he not, has I'm nothing to gain. He has nothing to gain by concede if because then he has to do a flip flop, right? If he if DC if something changes like overnight, he has to flip flop. He does the, the worst. He if I'm Joe Biden, do not concede. Do not concede this. And then you do this flip flop, and it's going to be terrible. You better off just saying we're going to fight on. Wait till the last ballot's counted, and I, you know that do that. Big Scott says he's yapping. Quinn says it's on CBS. CBS can't broadcast shows. I do not know what what Biden's yeah. If anyone's got because we can't put the sound on here. Uh. Because, but if anyone's got an update on what Biden's saying, please let us know. He say they're going to win Pennsylvania. That's what he's saying. It's cool. It's he it could. I mean, it's listen. He needs Pennsylvania. He needs Pennsylvania. And Jay Davis is Jay Davis is saying Biden says he will win Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. If he does, it's over. He needs to win two of the three states. If, okay, so here's what it comes down to. If he he's got to win. Sw- if he's Okay, so okay, let's do some math here. Okay, so two. Okay, he's at two twenty three right now, according to according to AP. If he wins Arizona, as predicted, that's yeah. two. That's two thirty four. If he comes out and wins Nevada, even though it's leaned to Trump now, only with two percent reported, that's six. That's two forty. That's two hundred and forty electoral votes. If he wins Pennsylvania, that's two sixty. If he wins Michigan, that's the election. If he wins Wisconsin. That's 270. That's the election. So he's got to win Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and he has to have Wisconsin or Michigan. Michigan. Yep, that's what we're looking at. And let's assume he holds Nevada and Arizona. This is that's what- not counting North Carolina. North okay. Carolina is still is still really really close. Really close. Um, but it's 94 percent have been reported though. Yeah, and so it let- looks like it's going Trump. Yeah, 83 so the- percent in Georgia. I think that's Trump. Texas is going to go Trump. Yeah. Texas is done. Yeah, I put the map up, and this is how it looks right now. The 11 that flip, 294, down from the 305. If Pennsylvania flips, who's calling me? I'm doing a show. Who's calling me at 1245 at night? Um, Probably me. (laughs) So you you got Pennsylvania that we flipped. And then you're right. It comes down to Michigan or Wisconsin. Either one and a flip. Wisconsin's enough to flip it for Biden. There you go. Look at the map. It's three. We're down to. I'll say four states. Let's put North Carolina in there because it's close. There are four states this is coming down to right now. And again, you look at Trump. He's got. He's got. He's got the. He's. He's. He's, he's got the deck ahead of him right now. I. You yeah. know, Pennsylvania won't be enough. He's got to get one of those other two states. Yeah, he's got to get. Some, he's got to get two of those four. He's got to get North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. He's got to get two of that four. He's got to get two of the four. Well, let's put it like this. Let's go back. So if he gets Wisconsin and Michigan, it puts him it puts him at 270. Something's missing here. Something's mi- it puts him at 270. That doesn't make sense. He needs Pennsylvania or North Carolina is what he needs. He needs he needs Pennsylvania or North Carolina right now. That's the key. How many electoral votes does Alaska have? It's probably going to go Trump. I'm just three. saying. Three. Alaska's got three. But that's not even nothing's being reported. That that went to Trump last time. I don't think, and that that there everyone's predicting that that would be the same. Yeah. No, definitely definitely not the case there. Um, I don't think that's going to flip. Coopier historian. So this is the ballot in Alaska. 
five candidates in Alaska, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Joe Jorgensen, Libertarian, Don Blankenship, Constitutional Party. I'm familiar with that one. Roque de la Fuente is Rocky, on the Rocky, ballot Rocky, for the alliance. Rocky, Rocky de la Fuente. Okay. Alliance party? What's I'm I'm I guess I'm dense. What, um, what, what's the alliance party? It's a third it's some small party that um I don't think it's a national party. So I don't think they're on every ballot. They're not. Yeah. Rocky de la Fuente is a guy who um He's a guy. What happened to the results here? Okay, now it's right. Um, he's a guy. He's always on, he's always running for president. He, I don't remember the last party he was at. He was on some like Constitution Party or something like that. But he's run a few times for president, and he's just always on the ballot. And you get the name Rocky De La Fuente. I didn't even know how to pronounce his name. So his nickname his name's Ro, uh, Roke. Or, but his nickname's Rocky. Uh, he's a perennial candidate. He's, he was a reform party. He had something called the Delta Party. Um, he's guy who's been a, he's he's run a few times. He's run he's run on several campaigns. He ran in 2016. Is it like so? It's like Ralph Nader running for the Green Party for like 30 yeah. years. Yeah. It, you know he's not a. You know he's he's one he's like one of these fringe candidates who's always out there. Um, he's foot. I know he was, a. He, he's run. He's, he's never, I don't think he's ever won an election. I mean, I, I don't, I think he tried to run against Trump actually too. So yeah. Yeah. Jay's saying that AP called Florida, Iowa and Ohio. Yeah. We, we called Iowa a, a few minutes ago. Jay saying Montana. Jay saying Montana was called Montana's for, bumper yeah. Fox. Well, yeah. It's Montana's called for Trump, uh, uh on okay. the AP too. That's, that's been a while. Yeah. Oh, too. So, yeah, no, it's. Once is the go- mail-in ballot, is that, is it, I mean, uh, listen, in, look, uh, like I mentioned, when we, I think we kicked off the show in Harris County in Texas, a million early votes. You know, and, and look, I mean, don't discount those mail-in ballots because a lot of them could have been submitted, you know, and people could have still voted a different, you know, it's a very different way. And look at when some of those polls were a few weeks ago, maybe when some of those ballots were sent in. That's it, it, how many how many mail in ballots really are there? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, that's a good question. And and, uh, you know, like I said it's it's interesting. Like, who knows if my ballot was counted in North Carol North Carol. North Carolina should be called very soon. It's still at 94%. So I don't know what's going on there right now. So there was, uh, according to the Washington Post, over 100 million people turned out for early voting, but mail in voting, 26 million mail in votes were cast. So 29, 26 million votes. But you, you look at like Michigan. But they're right not there. all they're not all Biden though. They're not all Biden. They're not all Biden. It's That's not like twenty six million people. Yeah. Yeah. And and Quentin said they counted some I guess his state before the uh election. So that's interesting. Yeah. Like my my state, you could have postmarked it today and it would be counted. Nevada is Lana. What's going on in Nevada? They're just like it's interesting. As we head into, um, and we're gonna have to figure out how long we go on for. But we, I, I'm still ready to go roll if you wanna. But uh, we got some more things we can we could talk about. How are you doing? What's next? Next on the list, uh, we have some. We haven't talked enough cigars tonight. Um, so these are some topics that are. Um, I put some topics on here that were things that affect. Actually, Coop, before we do that, why don't you? There's a couple sponsor reads we haven't done. Yeah. So why don't uh, let me take a quick brick break? Why don't you do that? Why don't you run through some of our our, our faithful sponsors for the show? Yep. I'll and then do that. We'll do, we'll do a little cigar chat, and then I think uh, and then 
Maybe we'll have some more information and then maybe we call it. Yeah, I time, agree. I, I know. Think. Yeah, we agree. Okay, so okay. let me let me kind of go do that while you take a well deserved break there. Um, and I want to mention uh, Michael's Tobacco. With just over a decade of ownership, Michael's Tobacco has become the premier tobacconist for the Dallas, Fort Worth metro area and cigar patrons the world over. With two convenient locations in Euless, just a quick jump from the DFW airport and Keller, Texas, Michael's Tobacco stands as a beacon for the Texas cigar retailers. Michael's was the very first cigar lounge in the state of Texas to add a full bar to its list of ever growing accommodations. Proprietor Mike Peacock is a former IPCBR board member and now has made Michael's a family affair by having his son Bob join the ownership force. Under general manager and master storyteller Tracy Spencer's leadership at Michael's, his self-proclaimed accomplishment has been assembling, quote, the greatest cigar team in the cigar retail business, unquote, as well as some of the industry's finest relationships with some of the most respected individuals. The inventory director, Jason Fields, handles and maintains two of the area's proudest humidors containing premium cigars for everyone from the everyday smoker to the most ardent collector of rare pearls. Under Mike, Bob, Tracy, and Jason's example, they've enlisted a staff of Kevin, Austin, Bear, Joe, Silas, and Brandon that collectively boast over 100 years of combined industry experience. Together, they have brought a true and message blades a true and blessed mainstay for the respected communities. Whether you're celebrating an anniversary, birthday, home fun, or just a desire to relax, Michael's Tobacco will have the perfect scar waiting for you with an exquisite beverage pairing and lively conversation. Visit michaelstobacco.com for more details and a score and a calendar of upcoming events. Michael's Tobacco, not just a cigar shop, but the perfect blend of Texas hospitality and the days of yore. So a couple of other things. Um, I am really disappointed. We don't have enough contest entries tonight. Come on, guys. Uh, I'm giving away free stuff. I'm giving away this this Vega Fina gift box here. Uh, it's got a nice bottle of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, it's got a headphone, uh, excuse me, I call them earbuds, whatever you want to call it, the wireless earbuds. Um, don't ask me what to call it. I, but they're the wireless headphones that you can use on your iPhone right now. Um, and you got this beautiful torch lighter via printer. And all you have to do to enter, right, is you go on to uh, the comments where I've been doing hundreds of comments tonight. It's over 300 comments. And you put um, a name of a Vega Fina cigar. Now, every Vega Fina cigar, but the Vega Fina 1998 is eligible, um, which is what th this is all branded with Vega Fina 1998. You just got to put a name of a Vega Fina cigar and hashtag it with Vega Fina 1998. And here's the catch. You can look up the answer because if you go to Google or if you go to Cigar Coop, you will have the name of a Vega Fina cigar. I'm giving away free stuff here. I, I see some of these. If, I want I want people to enjoy these contests here. So get in and enter here. I mean, what you have nothing to lose. We don't track your email information. We don't, um, you know, we don't make you tag and join and do a whole bunch of stuff. We just want to reward our live audience here with some really cool stuff. And, and, and I'll tell you what, the Vega, Fina, Vega Fina giveaway is a great one. Uh, this is sponsored by Tobacco or USA. Uh, they're giving away some great prize packs. And uh, I, I should be getting 100 entries right now here. Um, and I, and I, I, I haven't seen any. I mean, I try to keep reminding folks. And we put these up at the beginning of the show. Uh, I leave it up for a couple more days. You, this is free. F-R-E-E -E is what I'm saying to win that. So definitely get in on that contest here. Uh, and we will be picking a winner. Secondly, if you entered the Battle of the Bands Ultimate Giveaway, guess what? We are doing a, a we are going to be doing a drawing again. So we will have a drawing once again. And if you entered the last time, guess what? You have a chance to win the ultimate prize, uh, the ultimate giveaway uh, from the Battle of the Bands contest, a value of two hundred dollars. This is what we do here. We give the easiest way to enter contest. We don't require you to. Um, to uh, buy something in advance. Um, we were the only Battle of the Bands contest to not have a giveaway that required a purchase, by the way. Um, so that's kind of goes back to the core roots of Cigar Coop, where I have a no uh, purchase necessary philosophy. I just ask you to tune into the, or, or check the website out for, for something uh, to do that. So again, a pretty good uh, giveaway. We're gonna be redrawing. I'll have the date for that uh, towards the end of the week when we, we'll do another live drawing live on the air with the spinning wheel. Um, and you will have a chance to win the ultimate prize pack. So stay tuned for that. On the calendar, on the calendar, um, we have um, I, on Thursday night, primetime episode 163, we have the one and only Steve Saka uh, as a guest. Um, you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, 
you know, it's been a long, we haven't had a one-on-one with Steve on, on the primetime show in a couple of years. We've had him on some panels, uh, but we're going to have Steve one-on-one. Uh, I am going to ask him about the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, woodchuck gate that happened, uh, with the woodchuck. I, I want, I want answers on the woodchuck. Um, so we're, I'm going to, we're going to, but we'll dive into a whole bunch of other things with Steve soccer as well. Um, on Sunday, um, I have I been, wouldn't hear him answer that question. <laughs> well, we will ask about the woodchuck. Absolutely. I, I want answers. If, if he was actually going to kill that woodchuck, I, I, I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Um, on Sunday, I've been asked, um, I'm very honored uh, that the Meet the Professor team of um, Carlito Fuente, Cynthia Fuente, Jeremiah Mirafel, and Jose Blanco have asked me to be on their show as a guest. Uh, Look, when when they when when that company rings the phone and asks you to be a guest, uh, we're on. So I'm honored to be on that show. Um, that will be Sunday night, uh, Sunday afternoon, and then you can tune to El Oso for more takes, which Bear is going to be having his three year anniversary show with Tim Wong as part of the Lozona Palooza takeover. So uh, we'll be doing that on Monday. Uh, we're going to be premiering primetime jukebox. Uh, Dave Burke and I are going to be doing a, uh, a, uh, a Thunderdome battle between Dolly Parton and D- Diana Ross. You're not going to want to miss that. Um, originally, that was scheduled for 8 p.m. I think I'm going to pull it up earlier because Developing Palettes is doing their Lizona Palooza takeover. So we want to give ch- folks a chance to watch those both. So that time is probably going to change from 8 p.m. to 7 p.m. I got to confirm that with Aaron and then we'll get the word out on that. And then next Tuesday, Bear and I are back for Special Edition 88. Uh, we are going to be a part of the Lazona Palooza takeover on Special Edition. Um, and uh, we'll be doing um, – we'll have the Lazona team on. We'll have some fun with that show as well. Um, and then Special Edition is going to be on a little bit of a break till December uh, just because Thanksgiving is coming up, travel, and we, we do too many shows as it is. So, um, And then in December, we'll have the Scar Aficionado pregame show as, as – special edition 89 so uh and we're gonna have a special guest for that show so um we'll, we should have that confirmed pretty soon so bear i just went through the schedule we did the sponsor reads um i have not gotten into the cigar topics yet but i wanted to go back to the board i haven't seen any major changes from the ap right now um so as far as i go that is still leaning red with three percent reporting yeah but reno and reno and vegas haven't done a thing yet uh, yeah, I mean, the, I guess it's people manning the uh, the nuclear, you know, test areas and stuff who went to vote. Uh, not even Elko has voted, which is in the north part of the state. North Carolina hasn't budged from 94 percent for the last hour and a half. I wonder if they're just counting the absentees at this point. Well, Biden didn't mention, apparently in the talk, didn't mention North Carolina. So maybe he's conceding North Carolina at this point. Did, did he mention anything about uh, what, and he didn't concede? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he mentioned that he said that uh, apparently, according to Q, he said that he, they're going to win the uh, Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Um, Quinn can correct me on that. Yep. Um, uh, but I think that's what he said. So. Uh, can we get Eric to answer? And if he went, if he if he wins those three, then he wins the yeah. election. But yeah. he's got to win all three. Yeah. I he just says he's com- confident that he'll win Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan if they count all the votes. Very good. Um, a couple of questions. Is Alan Rubin call, is, is that a prediction? Alan Alan Rubin said that Biden's going to win over three hundred. Let's we'll see. He's got to win. He's got to pull. Some, he's got to pull. He's got to come he's gotta, from behind. He's got to win everything. He's got to come from behind. Alaska. Alaska just got called for Trump, according to Fox. Jay Davis said, "Well, that was predictable. Yeah, that was predicted. Yeah. That was going. It. That's going as predicted. Yeah, we got to pull it. Um, um, a couple of questions I just want to answer here. Um, in the chat, um, I'm not going to ask Eric Espinosa who he voted for, but I am going to ask Espe- Eric Espinosa some tough questions. So I'll just kind of say that. Um, and uh, Scott asked, "What am I for Thanksgiving? It's turkey, of course. So, um, um, stay tuned on that." But right now, the uh, the AP hasn't budged on anything yet. And I don't think anyone's calling this race tonight. No. This is Jay, you're right. Jay, uh, Jay said if Biden wins Pennsylvania, he 
probably only needs to win Michigan or Wisconsin. That's true. Well, no, he, he only he, needs he, to win. He, yeah, we went to win two of the, he wins two of the three. He wins the election. So he needs to win two of those three. He's got to win. No, he's got to win Pennsylvania in one of the two. Yeah. This is kind of, yeah, he has to win Pennsylvania uh, and, and one of the two to do it. Uh, because I just kind of did, if you do the math, uh, if he wins, if he flips, mm, interesting, it's 270. It goes up to 270. It's 270. 270 so, he does win. Win. so you're right. You're right. Yeah. Gay's right. Gay's right. Yes. It's the first to 270. Yeah. Yeah. So, so two twenty. He's showing at two. According to AP's two, he's the 223. He's going to win Arizona, which puts him at 234. If he wins, if he wins the 20 election electoral votes from Pennsylvania, that's 254. That's 254. If he wins Michigan, that's 270. That wins so, in the election. So, that wins in the so, White House. So Wisconsin's the closest to the three right now, uh, with 84 percent. Michigan, there's almost a nine point lead, a little over nine point lead, but a lot hasn't reported yet. Uh, Pennsylvania, there is a 14 point lead, but a lot hasn't reported yet. North Carolina has been stuck. Uh, Trump's got a Trump, I think, is going to pull it out. I don't know what's happening. The Senate race is really what's kind of they haven't called the Senate race either, by the way, which is telling me that there's absentee ballots that are going to be involved with this. Do they but, order does Biden order does Biden order a recount in North Carolina? He could. I mean, because North Carolina was uh, was is has been. I mean, that was the that was a linchpin, and well, it's going to be controversy either way because they kept the polls open later, and that's going to I'm sure create some. If this is no matter how it goes, someone's going to complain. Jay Davis is saying that there's low returns so far from Detroit, Pittsburgh, and Philly. That's well, what that... cons- that's why these states haven't been called yet. Yeah, it's that th- by no means is Trump locked up this th- locked up this yet. Oh shit! Alan Rubin just said Trump tweeted the election is rigged and then deleted the tweet. <laughs> so he took his someone stole his phone back. He got his phone. <laughs> he got his phone for five Don- seconds. <laughs> It's only like grab the phone. What the fuck are you doing, Donald? <laughs> the election is rigged. If if the president wins re-election, can 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 we, you know, like like just ask him to do half the tweeting? Just cut it in half. Just half the tweeting. Yeah. You can still say what you want to say. Just half the tweets. Half the tweets. <laughs> uh, you know, if Twitter went away tomorrow, I would not be upset. It's the biggest bathroom wall out there, but I used to think Twitter, until, until, uh, Twitter's why, dude. Twitter is how you and I actually got started, Coop. Really, I started following you on Twitter before I found it. Followed you anywhere else? I did very I little. Looked at your website. I did very little interaction on Twitter. I know, but I'm just saying, back in 2010, 2011, when I started following you, that was yep. when I, that was that that I started following you before I read your website. Yeah, true story. No, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, you had that. That's when you had the website back then. <laughs> yeah, my, my stupid blog. Sure. No, nah, nah. call it a website. Nah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Looking at uh, a couple more points here um, before we wrap it up for tonight. Um, a couple, you know, changes in administration, right? Let's just, you know, a change in administration could have an effect on policies right now that we're, we're seeing in the cigar business. Right. Sure. And I have three questions with this that, you know, I, I'm sure these could be a little polarizing, but um, they relate to cigars and they're simple questions. Um, the first one is related to the FDA. Will a change in administration have a drastic effect in the battle with the FDA? No. I'm saying no as well. Because I kept hearing, I kept hearing for the last year how we were making progress with the Trump administration, and I've seen no results with that. Anything we've gotten has been in the courts, but I have not seen. All I see are letters floating back here. Texas uh, got called, Coop. Texas just got called. Wow. So Donald Trump is now at two twelve, 
and Joe Biden's at 220. Wow. So Texas is something that we – earlier we were wondering what was going on in Texas. We were surprised by the things. Now Texas gets called. Texas and Florida um, go to Trump. Trump defends in, in both those states. Um, so that's a big – that's 38. Trump is now within – this is now – this is now – we're down the stretch. Um, this is an absolute horse race right now. Yep. We have an absolute horse race going on in these two states. I mean, is this in this race rather? These two candidates, excuse me. Uh, wow. So we both agree. We don't think that there's going to be a change in in the policy. No, and, and I'll tell and I'll tell you why. Um, because of the latest decision from the FDA that they don't have the resources to regulate the cigar industry like they said that they could. Yeah. And that's not going to change with who. It doesn't matter who the president is, and it doesn't matter who the director of the FDA is. You know, uh, you know, the F, the F, the head of the FDA can resign, be fired. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that they lack the resources. So it doesn't change. In, in furthermore, his... if. Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say for, furthermore, furthermore. Listen. Um, um, the. For for eight years. The Obama administration, say what you will about the, the former president and your personal feelings about him, but he pushed off regulating the premium cigar industry for a long time, for basically seven and three fourths of years, <laughs> three quarters of years, right? And then he he let he 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 let he let the deeming regulations in, and basically the eleventh hour, and that's why we're in the spot that we're in as an industry, but. He didn't really want to touch it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And Biden was a part of that administration. And there's nothing in Biden's background yeah. that suggests that he would yeah. that he would take an extreme deference to what's going on currently. Right. Um, he's not gonna come in and say he wouldn't come in and and and, and you know just suddenly appoint someone who's going to suddenly reinforce the deeming regulations. Yeah. No, yeah. it's still going to be the same process that it's under. It just doesn't change. It just doesn't uh, change. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not still interested in a battle. It doesn't change anything. It's just, yeah. I'm not interested in your private comments actually on the election either. Just I'm telling people as well, or what you think. So we're just kind of doing that. Just, you know, uh, I appreciate you not putting it public. I'm not interested in private comments either. So I'll just leave What's it at that? that. I'm not interested in getting a private comment on, on anything with the election. Thank you. You know, it's like, you know. Oh, sorry. I was like, what did I say? Sorry. No, you, di you didn't say it. No. No. So I'm just kind of saying that. Um, no, I agree with you. Um, I think part of it was Obama put the, put the, uh, gave the FDA to control. The FDA, he didn't push the FDA to kind of get those regulations out. It came at the end of his administration. So he, he you know, whether it was deliberate or not deliberate, uh, the can was getting kicked to the next administration. Uh, we get into the next administration. And they've done nothing. There's nothing that's come out of the White House. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing. So we're not in any. It's not like that Trump issued some sort of a executive order that favored the cigar industry here. Anything that's happened has happened through the courts right now, which I think has been more important. So I don't think we're going to see a drastic effect. I don't see Joe Biden taking this as a priority right now, unless he's got to make a deal with someone in the Senate. Um, the, and you could argue that who signed the H-21 thing into law was Donald Trump. Right. He could have it's vetoed true. that. He could have vetoed it. He didn't. Right. So I don't see a big change in that happening. Um, but you never know. Right. It's much like this election, Coop, to be honest. Millions of dollars spent. High contention on both sides. And at the end of the day, yep. as it's looking right now, not much is changing. No. Nor do I see a reelection of Donald Trump changing anything either. Because it just it's they've had four I mean four years nothing's happened with, from that again everything's happened through the courts which has proven to be the most successful route that the industry's had. I, I tell you what, I tell you what I apologize for interrupting. I tell you what a re-election of the president does for the premium cigar industry. It allows the premium cigar industry leg uh, legislative battle to be fought on a front that they're familiar with from the past four years. That's it, the it, only advantage. And it gives them a chance to try to get something out of the White House. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it's not. Um, like I said, I don't see this as a priority for Biden either. To go, unless he has to cut a deal with someone in Congress on something, that would be the only thing I would say watch out for. And like I said, you know, this whole H twenty one thing, it got lumped into something that wasn't even where cigars was a rounding error on that 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 bill, that spending bill. Mm-hmm. So that's where I kind of see some of the thing. But I don't think it matters party wise. I don't think that mattered all that much because I think any president would have signed that. Can I go back to something that's not cigar related for two seconds? It just Absolutely. dawned on me. Sorry. Yeah. It's the late hour here. Yeah. It's killing me here. Um, so Alan Rubin uh, said that that apparently Donald Trump tweeted, the election is rigged, and then the tweet was deleted. Why would he say that when he he's leading in all the states and he stands to win re-election? Uh, don't know. Um, sorry, that just that just occurred to me. I I just go, I just because 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 if you're going off the map right now, the way that the AP is reporting it, the way that Fox is reporting it, the way that CNN even CNN has it reported right now, is it looks like it's it looks like it's the president's to yeah. lose. See, this is where but this is what Trump said. Okay, let's let's kind of look at what Trump said. We are up big, but they are trying to steal the election. We will never let them do it. Votes cannot be cast after the polls are closed. Um, right. That's I, I don't know if he used the word rig or not. If you, if was, I don't see any that said the word rigged in here. OK. Um, well, so, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. The polls close. You can't vote. I mean, that's that's the end. So, of it. Yeah. yeah, that's not rigged. Um, That's now I said this at the beginning of the show. I thought this was going to be a little bit of an issue in North Carolina with some of the stuff that happened. So, um, you know, but I, I, he's basically he, he I, I don't see a need for him to put that tweet out either. So. It, sorry, that just confu- like I started thinking about that just started confusing me. I'm like, because I'm looking at the same board, presumably that they are. Yeah, I mean, they're probably looking at several different polling. They they yeah. have their own internal polling. He's not a big. He's not a big. So let's be real on that. Um, look, that's a, you know, and I know you know, we'll see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know. Sorry, it, just an observation there. Yeah, I. I it agree. just occurred to me. Yeah. All right. The next question is, what do you think the if a change would a change in to have a difference on the policy of Cuba? Uh, yes. So, uh, so uh, this was this was reported back in April. Uh, Joe Biden said that if he wins, if he won the election, the first one of the, one of the things that he would do is roll back the rollbacks that that Trump, Trump basically returning to. Returning to the relations that uh, were put in force by the Obama administration. So, yes, yeah, if Joe yeah. Biden wins the White House, the relationship with Cuba would change. I uh, don't. Tr- yeah, the, it will. The I, Trump, uh, yeah, the Trump administration has uh, has uh, rolled back because of some things that had happened. Uh, you know, some of the things that had happened to American travelers. But mostly it's been a diplomatic stance uh, of, of Cuba's. Uh, recognition and relations, continuing relations with uh, Venezuela and their their leader Nicolas Maduro, who uh, uh, the United States's position is that 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 uh, that leadership, his presidency, is illegitimate. Interesting. So, so that that is the that is the that is the diplomatic reason. Now, there's some other emotional reasons of um, influential reasons with. You know the travelers who got sick, and obviously, uh, obviously, travel restrictions in general with COVID and things like that. But the 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 underlying diplomatic reason between why Trump, the Trump administration and our country rolled back those uh, those openings that the Obama administration had put in place is uh, because of Cuba's re- uh, relationship with Venezuela, which our country uh, has basically deemed that 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 leadership that's in power in Venezuela is illegitimate. Yeah. Yep. So um, that would change. Yeah. What I don't see happening under Biden is I don't see the embargo getting lifted. No. I don't see that happening. I think that's if that's a I think regardless, that's something we're looking at later this decade. Um I don't think there was enough support in the House or the Senate to move that forward yet. And I think there's a lot of people playing, you know, I think there's I that's gotta get through Congress, which is gonna be some work. So I don't see that change. But I do see, like you said, going back to some of the Obama thing, I think Biden certainly would want to be a president to 
be the guy to open Cuba back up, but it's not going to be something that he can do easily. He's going to probably use the Obama that didn't use some executive orders to do it and or roll back some stuff that Trump rolled back. That's all that would happen. Yeah, the embargo is not getting fully lifted by any president in the next, I would say, the next eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I would say even further than that. Yep. And my third question to you, will change in administration have a drastic effect on the Latin American cigar producing countries? And I think we're talking. Will it have a change? Will it have a change? If something cha- if there's a change in administration, do we see how to, I mean, we've always heard the battle. It's not just the jobs here. It's the jobs in Latin mm-hmm. America. We're seeing Nicaragua potentially become more and more of a thorn in the U.S. side right now. So the question really becomes about Nicaragua and whether whether or not uh, a Trump a continued Trump administration or a new Biden administration would improve relations, keep relations they are, or, may, or it would become worse. Correct. That's what we're right. asking. Right. But I think there's a secondary. Essentially, because yeah, but Honduras and the Dominican Republic are they're they're in, in the terms of this in the context of this question are, are they have no bearing on the discussion. Well, it, unless there's regulations pushed through again, right? That would affect you know, the production there. I don't I don't see Honduras and the Dominican effect. Now, Nicaragua is another story and what's happening with the government there. I think that's something we got to watch right now and, and how that affects things. OK, so I would say don't know. For that part, Nicaragua. Like, you know, I think there's some people. In I think Nicaragua it stands who, to reason that. I think it stands to reason that both administrations would try to improve relations. I think it stands to reason. There's there's nothing there's nothing on the there's nothing on the democratic agenda that would uh, that that stands out to me at least in my mind that would say why they wouldn't want to. Now, if Venezuela was a major producing cigar country, then we would have a then we would have a different discussion. I think. Yeah. Because Venezuela, then on both on both sides, like I don't think. Um, Joe Biden might improve relations with Cuba in spite of in spite of the country's uh, uh, stance on um, the the uh, the viewpoint of illegitimacy on Maduro. Um, but um, I, 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 I don't see I don't see. Like, I don't see Biden improving relations with Venezuela. And then Trump's definitely not going to do it because they've they've made that clear this administration has made that clear so yeah so i don't yeah i don't i think both administrations would work to improve relations in in, in cigar producing countries to answer okay the question. that's a fair one i i can i can see that did another state just go for biden something went for Biden. he's got 224 now why he got called minnesota got minnesota got called minnesota got called no, that was that was already called Minnesota. Yeah. Arizona still isn't called. That's Ar- the gap is narrowing there. Yeah, I don't think Nevada is still heavily Trump, but with only four percent reported. No, well, they're I according to my map, there's precincts reporting, and and now they're they're showing up blue. Yeah, Vegas is showing blue. Yeah, that's what. Um, so Biden now Nevada is up to forty nine percent, and Vegas and Reno, um. <coughs> Vegas is reporting Blue Reno hasn't come in yet. That um, gets that gets him to two thirty. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, it really at this point. Oh, Nevada just Nevada just leaned <laughs> blue on my map. So Nevada. Maine, Nevada, and Arizona are blue. So that Maine is. Maine splits <laughs> votes though. So, but assuming he gets all four, that's 228. If he gets 11 from Arizona, that's 239. If he gets the six from uh, Nevada, that's 245. He needs. Comes back he to those, needs, four, those three states. Yeah, it comes back. He needs two, 245. He needs 265. He needs he needs Pennsylvania. He needs Pennsylvania, or he needs to sudden he needs to suddenly pull Georgia, North Carolina, and Michigan and Wisconsin. 
he needs to get those four yeah. if he doesn't get Pennsylvania. So he's got to get he's got to get Pennsylvania. If he gets Pennsylvania, that still only puts him at that puts him at two sixty five. If Trump takes Michigan, Wisconsin, New North Carolina, and Georgia, Biden Biden can take, but Biden if he flips two of those go back Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Takes he's got to flip two of them. He's got to flip two of them, or he's got to, or he's got to sweep the other four. Yep. He doesn't get Pennsylvania. He has to get North Carolina. He has to get Georgia. North Carolina has thirteen electoral votes. So, oh god, let me do the math. This is this. Well, I haven't, not- done, I haven't done this much math in my entire fucking life. Um, <laughs> two two twenty four, two thirty, two forty, two forty four. If he doesn't get Pennsylvania and he gets North Carolina, that's two sixty five. Yeah, he he could flip. Yeah, he's he got flip, it. Mm. But he could flip North Carolina and Georgia too. So it's, if you look at Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia, if he keeps Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, but he flips North Carolina and Georgia, Biden wins the presidency. I don't think he's getting Georgia. I don't think he's getting Georgia either. So it, it comes down to that two. He's got to flip two more. He's only flipped one state this whole night. That's what we go back. He only the only state he's flipped is Arizona. Okay, so Nevada just shot up to forty nine percent precincts reporting. Yeah, I mean we're expecting that to go to Biden. Yeah, we're, I mean, I, so, I don't think there'll be any surprise that Nevada goes uh, with six electoral votes will go to Joe Biden. And that, that should happen relatively soon. What a battle. What a battle. I would, if you're a Trump person, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yet either seal this. Either. I, if you're either guy, this is going right. This is going into tomorrow. Did Trump just get another vote? Now he's at two thirds. It must be Nebraska or one or one of those split states must be going on with that. He's had Nebraska for a while, I thought. He's though. had Nebraska. You're right, but it's a mixed allocation. It's a mixed allocation. So, he's he, he, just went, Nebraska. he just went up from two twelve to two thirteen. That's what I'm kind of going. So something may be going on with those votes that we, we're not as familiar with. All right. One last thing let's hit. Um, as of now, it's 1.26 a.m. on the East Coast. We're not going all night, guys. Um, and it's 12.26 in the Central. And the Cigar Rights of America does not have an executive director. So the Glenn Loop era has come to an end. Um, and I think there's a lot of questions that have to be answered over the next few weeks right now. All right. So my big question is, I, I, where, what is CRA's plan for leadership going forward? And if it's as simple as the board making a statement saying um, some interim plan, I get it. You know, if you're going to have the board run it, I get it. But what is the plan? What is the plan? I mean, I think it's important because I think if you're asking people to send money in and, and, and I understand the importance of CRA, I think I want to I want a clear vision. What's the path of the leadership right now here? Um, that's what I, I'm an ambassador and, and I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting asked that already. So I, I think an answer needs to happen soon on this. And they've had seven months to figure this out. Right, because it was back in it was back in April when 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 Glenn announced he was stepping down. I um, so I'm about to say the most controversial thing that we've said all night. Considering the subject, I think it's right. It's, I think we've done pretty good. Right, we've been very. <laughs> um, I'm very, I'm very disappointed that that a leader wasn't announced by now. That well, a plan the, wasn't announced, or the plan is. 
But if you're gonna bud seal it, bud seal it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna do a bud seal, do a bud seal it on it. I, I'm disappointed I'm, I, too. I'm dis. They've had a lot of time to get. But again, you're asking. You know, you. I think it's important when you're fundraising. You gotta. The leadership situation has to be ironed out. And how this hasn't been ironed, I is a. I, I'm. If anyone from the board wants to to talk about it, I'm willing to talk about it. Um, I have a lot of faith in people on the board. So I mean, yes. Look at the names on this board. So There's this, some great people on the board. Well, it's a well, great we are organization. Just, but I think we need an answer on that. There's great leaders on the board. Yeah. Yeah, and. But yeah, like I said, I'm I'm just I'm disappointed that there hasn't been a plan laid out. I, I I am too. I am too. Now I've heard there's a lot of scenarios going on. I'm hearing, um, but I don't think they are interviewing for an executive director. Is one of them. So that's not something that's, you know, again, if you would if you have seven months, right, you you can bring someone in like sixty days beforehand and, and be Glenn's right hand man to turn this over. I don't think that's happening. I could be wrong. Well, Glenn Loop has had a right hand man for a while um, at CRA, Harrison Clark. No, he's more of an operations guy, though. He doesn't go and say he's had a right hand man. You want to put him as a business manager. The oper- I, I get that. But they need a face. They need a face to be interfacing with these other trade organizations right now, and interfacing in what you know, lobbying with the lobbyists. That that's not there. So, so Alan has brought up the the age old uh, discussion point that that uh, he thinks that CRA and PCA are going to finally merge. It could. That's the other scenario I can see. Uh, I think there's. I think that's more complicated than people think. It's a poss- I think it's a possibility, but I don't think it's an easy thing from what Pete still I- Pete Johnson's still on the board of CRA, correct? Pete Johnson's on the board of CRA. Look, they got they got the right guys on the board and everything. They got the no, Pete, the right the, Carly- the board yeah. is you know, like yeah. I said, the board's know, fun. Pete's yeah. a great leader. There's the, yeah, the, there's a there's great leadership on the board, as I mentioned before. That's that's not the but, issue. But if you yeah, no, I was do- I was bringing up I was bringing up Pete Johnson specifically because you know Pete has been a, a staunch reporter of the PCA. Pete uh, Pete was on um, on Eric's show last Friday, um, uh, saying that he will not be attending TPE. That's not a surprise. Um, That's not a that's not a surprise, though. Yeah, I wasn't surprised about that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going for shock value here, but his he is firmly in the camp, uh, like several other several other, um, you know, cigar companies that there's, you know, staunch. They're staying as staunch reporters to PCA with Pete being on the board of CRA and him and him actually standing by the PCA uh, on a a lot of their things. In fact, uh, he, you know, he was one of the first companies to announce that he was going to be attending this year's trade show when that, the big four pulled out. Um, He, you know, he's been a big, big supporter of PCA. I mean, so I think I've, I mean, I think Alan's comment has merit to it. um, But like you said, there's different complications there. So, But, but yeah, because don't forget if you merge him, you have to restructure the board of PCA. Because these these manufacturers are going to want a, a, a spot on that board then. That's why I think it's more complicated than that. And now look, you bring. What do you do with the? How do you? Who comes on that board? How many board seats are going to be offered to CRA if they merge with PCA? It's a fair point. That's that's my yeah. So I think it's more. I think that it's it's probably something on the table, but I think it's more complicated. I mean, and not everyone has to take a board seat, um, but it won't be a fifty-fifty merger. That's kind of the way I look at. It. I agree. This is all coming down to a money thing right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a. I mean, we're gonna have a board member on the show pretty soon that we can ask this question to, and we will ask it. Mm-hmm. I think we'll definitely ask that question. What's going on there? Um, but like I said, I have. Con- this is not a g- lack of confidence vote on it. It's just we're disappointed, is what we'll say. Yeah. No. I. I, I don't have. No. It's not a. It's not a vote of no confidence on my yeah, part. Right. It's. It's just. It, I'm just. I'm very disappointed that a plan wasn't laid out or a successor wasn't named. Yeah. 
at this point. Like you said, they had seven months. Like I thought they gave them, I thought, I thought director loop gave a heck of a option to them, giving them seven months notice. Yeah. And you know, Glenn has been a polarizing character in, in this fight for many years. He's, he's been criticized. Um, Mm -hmm. I, like I said at the beginning of the show, I think he, I look at this, he had a 12 year run. He, he had to work on building an organization from the ground up. It wasn't perfect. They learned a lot. They made a lot of mistakes along the way. His last year, there was some results in court. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not, you want I, I can't assess how much of that was him versus everyone else. I'm sure it was a team effort. But, you know, there were things that Glenn Loop had to do to create a lot of awareness. Um, mm-hmm. And he did a good job with that. Um, I think we should look very fond. This Glenn should be looked fondly for the service he gave the industry for for the last twelve years. Here's here's what I've said numerous times, Coop, on this show, on yeah. my show, and I've said it to I've said it to Glenn's face. Yep. Yeah. He did not do a great job. A great job would have constituted something that we still see as the pipe dream, right? Which is yeah. a which is an exemption for the premium cigar industry. Except that's a great a, job. That's like an A. Yeah, give him. You think you don't? You get an A. You get you, that means you got an A. If you did that, yeah. Right. That didn't happen. Um. So he doesn't. He doesn't get the great job nod from me. Um. Does but what I've bet? always told yeah. Glenn. Mm-hmm. What I've told Glenn and what I've said is that I think he's done a good job. And it's a it's a hard job. It's a thankless job. He's been criticized, rightfully so, by me on this show. We we went to to his to his face, not on his not to his face. I've but, I've I've been I, I, I would contend that I've been harder on Glenn uh, that maybe uh, collectively we if you want to throw it into it, that we've been tougher on him than any uh, any other media, media organization. That's that's everybody. That's that's CA included in that. Yeah, I, I there were a couple of interviews. I I saw a couple of other interviews he did with people that were contentious, uh, like Logan from Scar Federation. But I think from a consistent day, we we asked a, a lot of tough questions to him. Um, and you can go back and listen to the interviews. I mean, remember the first interview we did with him was probably he. You know, we we were hard, and then we we were very vocal on the twenty one thing. We didn't back down mm-hmm. on that. And me and Glenn have disagreed on the Giuliani piece greatly. So, um, and we've talked, you know, again, I don't think tonight's the night to bring up Giuliani as much because we've talked about that and I'm trying to keep it non-political, but uh, we've disagreed on points is what I'm saying. And we've been, we've been steadfast, but he's always, he's always engaged us. He's, he's, I think I felt he's listened to us. Maybe he didn't agree with it, but he, he gave us a chance to listen and counter. And you can't, I respect that a great, I mean, like I said, you, I don't think he gets a failing grade. That's, he should not get a failing grade for his work. I mean, do you just want to say C plus, you know, and we're not grading on the curve here. You know, um, you know, you could, you it's could, yeah, yeah. I'm not grading on a curve. I yeah, I would give I yeah. would give Glenn a, a, a solid solid C plus. Like if you put it like if you just like need an answer from me, C yeah. plus yeah. absolute like heart. If I if you if you want to dive into some of the details, especially with the more recent victories, he kind of creeps into that B minus territory. Um, Le- last year, I, yeah, this last year has been a good. I mean, for him to go out. With some wins. Yeah, what a swan song for him. Like, what, seriously. What swan, what, yeah, like, yeah, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Like, he could have went out with no results. I mean, and we took beating after beating on a lot of these things. This was the first year that we can honestly say some some progress was made on both substantial equivalents and on the, um, the warning labels, which they fought hard for. And again, I, I put it as a team effort. I'm not saying... It was mm-hmm. all him, and I'm not saying he had nothing to do, but I think it was, he was a part of that team, an important part of that team, and he did a good job with that. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, side note, I don't understand how the – just a side note, I was very really disappointed with the way the CRA uh, samplers were announced. I'll just kind of leave it at that. I think they needed to do a bigger <laughs> – that was a – there was a half-wheel article that turned out to be half-correct. 
Um, and, you know, leave it at that. But I think they, they, you know, that, that, you know, I, I get it. Then that, that's not their forte. So, but they could have done a better job. I mean, the CRE sample pack should be something that every media person should be promoting like right now as the retailers buy them and, and that didn't happen, but they're not in the organization of being, you know, they're, that's something for a fundraiser. So I kind of, I give them a break on that. I don't hold that against anyone, the board or Glenn on that. Mm. So, but I, look, I said, I think he did a, 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 a good, a, a good job, not a great job. Um, and I don't, like I said, I said at the beginning, I don't think he'd go full. I think he's going to be very vocal. I, I was wondering if there was a consulting scenario he comes back as in some sort of a consultative role. I was certainly possible. It's certainly possible. But there would have to be a role for him. Like, I, I don't think it would be a consultative role where he's hired back as executive director. I think it's like that consulting role where, you know, he helps out on maybe certain things. That's what I see yeah. that happen. And the big question is, where does Glenn go? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be in the cigar industry after this. Well, I don't see him ever running the PCA, so I don't see that happening. Mm -mm. So we shall see. Okay. We are very late right now. Um, you sound – we're both getting tired here. Um, <laughs> do we want do we want to close this out? Anything else we want? To I, I I say I say we I say we put it to bed, Coop. I think we got to put it to bed here. Um, so we can get to bed. Um, so here's where it stands. There is a bunch of things right now. Uh, the AP has it two twenty four to two thirteen. There's some variances with the various media sites. Um, uh, five states Trump is leading in right now. If he holds the five states. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia, he takes the presidency. If he if Biden flips two of those states, Biden will take the presidency. Biden has only flipped one state the whole night, Arizona. So, which still hasn't officially been called, but it might as well be. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't see that. It hasn't officially. I'm surprised it hasn't officially been called. Um, so, um, and Todd Johnson, he got reelected uh, over the sixty percent mark in North Carolina. So he did a he did a good job. Congratulations to our good friend Todd. Yes. Yep. yep to Ooh, Todd. Well um, uh, the North Carolina Senate race too close to call. Um, just I'm just quickly looking at the Senate thing right now. Um, we don't know how the Senate is going at this point, so it's close. Um, there are eight seats up. Um, and Biden's got to win seven of those. Uh, not Biden. The Democrats have to win seven of those. To claim, claim, uh, claim that at this point. So to get to fifty-one. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and like I said, we mentioned next week's shows already. So I think we're set on that. Uh, like I said, it's a big week for all of us next week. So um, as we kind of get into mid-November right now. All right. Uh, I'm going to thank our audience. Uh, great audience tonight. Great audience tonight. Um, uh, I am disappointed in the contest entries from the audience, though. I'm going to tell you that. Um, we could have had more for sure. So uh, I see Matt Ty is in there, a good friend. Uh, thanks to Matt as well. Um, I think Matt's part of the Lazona Palooza takeover as well next week. So. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, uh, like I said, a lot of media guys, we're all going to be converging on Lazona Palooza. We'll see what happens with that. You, like I said, we all, the whole primetime team's got shows next week. Uh, and I'm trying to get Dave Burke to do the Tuesday show with us, too. Um, oh, we'll that'd see. be awesome. Yeah, I meant to tell you that, but uh, I don't know. It's time difference is tough is the thing. So, we'll try to get everyone involved with that. Bear, uh, any Coop, final if I may, if, yep. Yeah, if I may. I, 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 look, I wanted to I wanted to take a moment real quick. Um, you know, we've said it a few times tonight. Um but I wanted to take a moment to thank to thank you um, for for putting on the show. I know that you were you were nervous, uh, like we said, before, like we've said countless times throughout this uh, the this, this show. This this was a this is a highly contentious election. Yeah, uh, it's going down to the wire. Just I mean, from a sheer entertainment aspect, from a sheer historical aspect, this is uh, this is a historic race, and we're 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 gonna in the next the next forty eight hours we're gonna see some history one way or another, and. Um, and no matter how it comes out, you know, um, 
Coop, you and I are going to keep doing this show. So yeah, uh, and, and, if you know, so that's 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 one thing you everyone else can look. You know, anyone doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, you can look forward to, look forward to that. We're going to keep doing we're going to keep doing primetime special edition. You're going to keep doing primetime. I'm going to keep doing all those for more takes, and so we can live with that. But I want to thank our audience. Um, sure. Um, look, we, um, there are, there are folks in the chat that are there. I, you know, they're very opinionated and about certain things and everyone kept it clean, kept it very gentlemanly, scholarly. And, uh, and I, I know, uh, I want, I'm going to go ahead and speak for you, Coop. I, I know that we both really, really appreciate it. We wanted to do this show for a couple of years. Uh, we wanted to have fun with it. We wanted to give you as, you know, a different a you know a different and a true bipartisan look at the history that was taking place tonight and i think we accomplished that and i want to thank our audience and i want to thank you coop and yep. it's uh, it's been a lot of fun and you know what i look forward to doing this in four years we're going to do it in four so. years again guys so um so yeah we'll probably do a midterm one because we're usually on tuesdays when these big things happen so yeah we'll do a midterm one for sure uh it won't be quite the same but um yeah, I look forward to it. Bear, thanks for kind of, like I said, you, you know, you, you you kept saying we got to do the show, we got to do the show. You know, I was very hesitant. And this is before the skip Jeff thing. Um, I was nervous about it to begin with. Uh, but in the end, when I look at our audience, and again, I put, our audience is the best audience in the world. I mean, I, I just can't. We asked really them to leave the politics of the door. Every one of them did. Um, and, uh, you know, that's it, it, like I said, we don't take that for granted. We thank you guys every week. We're going to continue to, I mean, we have some shows in November that are going to blow you away. So, uh, you know, you'll be hearing more announcements on, on some other shows. And then like I said, December, we hit the road with the CA show. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm really pumped on that. So. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. It always is good times. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, like I said, uh, it's one forty-five on the East coast. We're like, we're like, I was hoping we'd have a result. We, we don't, but we think we have the past <laughs> that we know of at this point. It's not going to happen tonight, guys. Um, so it was, yeah, it's a close election and I think we got everything. We, I got everything we wanted and more of this. So, so thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's going to put a wrap on things. That was primetime special edition number 87 into the annals of history for Wednesday, November uh, fourth in the Eastern and Central time zones. Uh, that's, uh, so we will see everybody Thursday night. Uh, be sure to tune into all the Lazona Palooza shows next week as well. And uh, have a super fantastic night. And uh, let's let's all like uh, smoke over a cigar and show this. Let's show the world the cigar industry. Uh, basically, is is great. Let's show what we're all good about. <laughs> all right. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>